The fuck? Hey, y'all did your thing, low for real. Whole bunch of gang shit going on. Goddamn crazy. So the trust road. these hoes because this last one had a prosthetic leg. <laughs> you guys having us here all the faculty all the student body and all the alumni we got some great people that's gonna be on this stage tonight Texas Southern University you guys are witnessing the next Kings of Comedy if you ready to have a great time say hell yeah Texas Southern University on my left side if you ready to have a great time say hell yeah Texas Southern University on my right side. If you're ready to have a great time, say hell yeah. All you guys down here on the floor, if you're ready to have a great time, say hell yeah. The first member of the 85 South Show. You've seen him on BET. You've seen him on MTV Wildin' Out. He is the coldest dressed in the game. All the way from Washington, D.C. TSU, give it up. We got Chico Bean in the house. Ain't nobody clean like Chico Bean. The next member of the 85 South Show, you seen him everywhere. You seen him on BET. You seen him on MTV Wildin' Out. We call him Loose Legs. You seen him in the movie I got to hook up to with Master P. He's all the way from the west side of Atlanta. TSU, we got DC Young Fly in the house. <laughs> Now the third member of the 85 South Show, he needs no introduction. But we gonna give him one anyway. We call him the Sensei. He is the coldest in the comedy game right now. TSU, we got Carlos Miller in the building. I'm gonna need everybody to stand up. Texas Southern University, stand up. We about to get this party started. If you watch the 85 South Show on YouTube, you already know what's about to go on. These are the next kings of comedy. TSU, I'ma need y'all to make some noise as loud as you can. Start clapping right now. This is the 85 South Show! Oh! Hold on. What's up? TSU, what's S up? You. I said, we out here, oh, we oh, out here, oh, hey, oh, we out here, oh, we, we out here, oh, hey, we, we out here, we out here, yeah. hey, I said, we, we out here, we out here, oh. hey, TSU, oh, I said, TSU, what you tell us? I said, TSU, what's up, baby? TSU, what's up? Oh. What's up, dog? What's up on this side here? How y'all feeling tonight? Where you at, Chico? They ready? They ain't ready. Where you at? I say, whoa. Oh, what's up, what's up, what's up? Where you at? Where we at? Where you at? Hey. Oh, the TSU's got that. They turned up in here. Chico. What's up, Yo. Man? Hold up, Chico. Yo. Hold up, J-O-N. Hold up. Where you at, nigga? DC, you take that side. Okay. Well, you, you take that side. That's I got this side. All right, man. Oh, we oh. lit. This oh. side lit anyway. Shit, hold up. Fuck that. Uh -oh. We over here. Uh oh. What you say? We on this side. What's up on this side? We turned up. Uh oh. That's how you feel. What you got, Chico? We Shout right here. Everybody on the floor. What's up with the floor? Where y'all at? Uh oh. That's the bougie side. That's the bougie side in the front. Yeah, oh, that's tight. The so front. They busted in, in the middle. And y'all on this side. Let me see what side got the lavish side, Chico. It's, hold All on. Right. My side turn. My side turn. Hold up. Hey, y'all on this side. Y'all on this side and y'all on this side. Uh oh. Right. It's about to go down. Hey, we on this side with it. Turn up. Hey. What? 
Yeah. That's what y'all got? That's yep. what they got. All right, my side, y'all ready? Here we go. Fuck that side. Whoa, fuck that side. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Right. She gonna, okay. gonna let him talk. Nah, I know we at school. Yeah. Take it. Lit. They got us fucked up. They got us fucked up. Okay. I got something for y'all. Y'all ready? Look, y'all ain't babe. Y'all ain't babe. Y'all ain't babe. Y'all ain't babe. Cause you stink with y'all mustache. What? That's okay. how you feel. Right, here we go. Hey, what the fuck was that? What the? F okay. Watch this. I got something for y'all. You don't even know I've been to this school before. Watch this. Where my baby at? Where she at? Where Miss Bennett? Hey, Miss Bennett! Hey, Miss Bennett! Hey, Miss Bennett! I miss you. Where you at? Oh, but you know what, Fly? It looked like uh, Miss Bennett on my side. Hey! Hey! Them people over there went to church before. Hey! What you got, DC? Sure. I'm hot. The AC don't work over here. All right, bring your ass back then. <laughs> All right, there we go. We won, <laughs> nigga. Hey, Try one more time my side. There we go. Hey, baby, how you doing? She like, I'm good. What's up, darkness? TSU, we in yeah. this bitch one more time. TSU, what's up, we in this bitch. Yeah. What's up, Sean? It's homecoming. It's, it's homecoming. homecoming. This what this this what this court shit for right here? These folk got the old ass trees right here. <laughs> it's it's oh, homecoming. <laughs> That count ain't even real. So who the home, who the homecoming queen is? Where, 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 where you at? They ain't pick one yet. Hold up, stop the music. She over here. Who won? Right here. There she go right there with the crown. Who won? On. She you did. the queen? You miss senior. Oh, you ain't you ain't make it all the way. What up? Oh no, you got uh, her fucked up. She like whatever, nigga. I'm the shit. That's right, baby. Man, she Let them know what grade. time it is. She missed 12th grade. What a uh. Miss 12th grade. <laughs> I just played. Congratulations, Miss 12th grade. What Miss TSU at? Where she at? She ain't here. She on the way. She coming late. She got to make an entrance. Salute to my man from I Wakanda. Hope. We got taking pictures right here. What's up with you, Wakanda? Hey, hey look Wakanda at this nigga forever. right here. She go, look at this nigga right here. Who? This nigga right here. Oh, the nigga with the tank top on? <laughs> Oh. Nigga like a red Dorito. Stupid ass. That nigga got an apron on? What the fuck? Nah. What? He got on a do-rag. Nigga got a red do-rag, too. You had to find that one. His homeboy with the tank top look like he mustard. That get you all the hoes. That nigga that's stupid. His yeah. home. The ugly hoes. His homeboy with the tank top look like he finna strip in this motherfucker. What's Dad going been, on, nigga? Dad been going to this school uh. for 30 years. <laughs> Oh, what's up, baby? Ah! Is that Miss TSU right there with the white boots? What's up with you, girl? You got them pop, 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 sugar pop. What you win? Hey, DC. Oh. DC, we got Miss TSU here. She just showed up with the cowboy boots on, the white cowboy boots. Hey, bro, we got Mr. Health Communication right here. <laughs> Hold up, what is it? Health Administration. Oh, boy, you look sick, boo. Boy, you got to see these boots. What he at? She right there, boy, with the white boot, white cowboy boot. She got them goddamn Rick James boots on. That's them goddamn. Fuck your couch, nigga. Fuck your couch. Oh, you miss TSU. Turn up. Come here, white boots. Get up. Do She's your shit. She's got this what we been white on. cowboy boots. This is what we been waiting on. She's got on white cowboy boots. <laughs> she is Miss TSU and she's the leader of the class. Oh, she got the white cowboy boots on, but she still got the big old fat ass. So come, come on, on yeah. Big, big booty. <laughs> TSU, and she like to wear boots. Yeah, waiting for some white shoe pops. And she like to wear boots. And she like hey. to wear boots. I can't believe we waited for her. We had to wait for that. Whatever, she turned up. So what, what, what Mr. TSU? What Mr. T.S. Hold up. What happened? Ain't none. He not here. 
He got step practice. Oh. He got what? Boy, step practice. Step practice? Yeah, this homecoming, boy. Them them steppers is somewhere right now practicing like a motherfucker. I said I won. Chica, hey, did I you see what he had step practice doing? I said I won. Two. I said I won. <laughs> Mr. T S U. Come on. Uh, hey. Hey. <laughs> Uh, hey, What's up, TSU? Make some noise. <laughs> for real. Time out. Hey, y'all legendary for having stupid. a real grandma set up in here. This is that rental center furniture right here. Y'all taking this shit back in the morning. I can look and tell. I know you been out. Boy, I sat on this couch. This shit flipped over. Oh, this is that rental center right here. If you don't pay your bill, they coming to get this. You don't want to fall on this fake ass carpet. Who this put this real. shit together? This look like some beautiful shit at a ghetto wedding. They, they got Beauty the, and the Beast. That's what this shit reminds me of. They got the ghetto wedding chairs. They got everybody sitting in the white chairs. Who's out there? You can tell this is a black school. This gym still <laughs> smells like a basketball game. Right. These they, champions, they champions in here. Oh, yeah. they winning. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Who went to the NBA? Anybody went to the NBA? Oh, okay, okay. Hey, these, this, what the, who, who idea TV. was it, who idea was it to put it on the, the white, the white, uh, trees and shit? Is who this idea like, it was it, to get some dead white like, trees? This is, hey, Miss TSU, do you got these white trees? Like, if you click your boots together twice, you just show up and these white trees be around? She said, yeah, that was my idea. Okay, so you won Miss TSU, so who would like to run up? Like, who almost won? Like, okay. She said, ooh, nope, not going to Did she it. really stand up and say, me? I did. I'm second place. She like, had three more look, votes. DC, she stood up like, like if she ever gets sick, it's going to be me. <laughs> you going to sit your first alternate ass down? So, so what you is? You missed first, your first attendance. She's the first runner up. Oh, she ain't even make the list. She's the first runner up. So who, who the first runner up? She's second alternate. Ain't that a bitch? It's two of them. It's first attendant and the second attendant. I don't even know why they say the second attendant. They should have just said, bitch, you, you lost. <laughs> That's like fucking with you like, all right, let me tell you who almost won. You, bitch. DC, you know Miss T.S. You be walking around campus talking shit. You'll never get the white boots, bitch. <laughs> That's right. I bet they stink. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> tell them you got socks on in them boots. You ain't barefoot. It's that big fat butt you got, girl. You're looking good. You, oh, so she got to be graduating. My stupid ass. I'm going to say, what grades you in? I ain't never seen this many black police officers ah. before. The hell y'all got going on? They ain't, they ain't real police officers. They just went to party yeah, they, and got the they uniform. Got, they got a whole African dude outside snitching. Here, they, they are smoking in the parking garage. <laughs> I do not know why they are smoking. They are not even students here. Hey, Chico. They are, they are smoking. I asked them to leave, but they did not leave. So I am going to go back around and tell the other officers to come here. And they hey, are Chico, smoking there. Even the real police were like, man, go on with that snitching ass shit, bro. He's like, no, I must let them know that they are smoking here. They need to fire that nigga. He's stupid. It's homecoming. It's the time to turn up, campus police. Y'all supposed to let they, they, shit they, they slide they this Where y'all coming from? You ain't doing shit. Uh oh, you got somebody screaming for you, Carlo. For real? For me? She said, Carlo! It was her? Girl, quit playing with me. You. I oh. can't fuck with these college women. Yeah. They want to fuck all, all right. night. All night. All right, Los, tell him. Uh uh. These I'll... young college girls, woo! That's they'll what I'm something. talking about. They'll do something to you. Yeah, Bruh, I don't fuck with these college women. They want to fuck all night. I was fucking with this young bitch. We fucked four times in one night. She got up and put her panties on. I was like, "What is you going, man?" I college going to sleep. They real. They bathe four times a week. You don't want them. Ooh. <laughs> they work hard. That's why they be musty sometimes. You got an eight o'clock. You don't get off till nine thirty at night. You done spread your classes around. You done been outside in this Texas heat all day. You smell like football, ma'am. I don't trust no girl who got baby wipes, but you ain't got no baby. You don't like the baby. I know. <laughs> Pass me the baby. <laughs> hey, J-O-N, they got you set up, nigga, in a motherfucker. They, boy, you looking like a hoe. Look how they got J-O-N set up in the white tent. 
Popo over here looking like an angel. Bro, you did, not, you did not see the chandelier they put in that bitch. Oh, they got a chandelier. Who the they fuck did y'all think this. was? Did y'all think Fantasia was coming tonight? Why y'all set this shit up like this? They got to they got to take out. Oh, this shit changed colors. Oh, you done turned on the lights. Uh huh. It's daytime, nighttime. It was a wonderful Christmas. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> I ain't fuck with me. You ain't gonna graduate. You better stop playing. <laughs> man, it's homecoming at TSU. This is my first time coming to TSU homecoming, man. Mine too. Y'all too. Y'all. Hey, I love I TSU. Got, I got they done some brought questions. me down here about three years straight. Y'all homecoming get lit. Y'all homecoming turned up. I always wonder what TSU homecoming was like. Cause you know, black HBCU homecoming is different, man. Like they the did. alumni, what alumni at? Any alumni in the building? Nope. There's some people that's still in freshmen when I came here three years ago. Hey, alumni, y'all, y'all, listen, for all the undergrads, let me tell you something about the alumni. Just look at the alumni this weekend. This is what you got to look forward to. Cause these motherfuckers use this weekend to come and let all their responsibilities go. They come and fuck all the people they should have fucked in undergrad. Get drunk, walk around campus with them old motherfucking t-shirts on and shit. That's what it is when you're alumni. some alumni in here. Shout out to all the women that's alumni that used to be fine. Now you build like a lunch lady. <laughs> ah! And that's when they want to give you the pussy. Hey, hey, baby. But, but can you be uh, an alumni without graduating? No. I yes, mean, I, I went, though. No, if you got an ID that say you no, went, you kind of like alumni. You only alumni if you graduated. You just went here if you went here. But you like alumni because you help other people graduate. See, no. black people got two levels of being finished with college. You like graduate and finish. Right. Like, did you graduate? No, nigga, but I'm finished. <laughs> I tried. That makes sense. I went to school for six months. I said, fuck that. That refund check ain't come quick enough. Shit, that's they the lied, day. I, they lied. That's the day I dropped March. out. You, you dropped out the day you got your refund Shit, check? Shit, as soon as I got my refund check, bro, I was out. Boy, you be needing that refund check, oh, don't what? you? I thought I was up. My shit and was 1205. I remember I had $1,205 out of the 46 cent. I walked out of school, had all my bags. I said, I'm starting to be grown. <laughs> shit, you be in that financial aid line, line be long in the motherfucker. You be like, shit. I know they're going to have my shit when I get up here. I done been standing here for 20 minutes. Let me tell you. You get up there, you be like, yeah, uh, what's your number? 7451262 Last name Bean. Okay, let me check. Uh, no, we don't have yours yet. Bitch, look, all right? <laughs> this is my third time coming up this motherfucker, all right? I'm tired of eating this bullshit with my money yet. I ain't got no gas. Ah! Help me, please, to the little lady behind the... Sorry, sir, it's nothing I can do. I, I Bruh, can't do anything It's to so help hard you. to get financial aid. They be asking you questions you don't even know how to get the answer to. How much money did your grandma make in 1997? <laughs> What's your father's middle name? I don't even know this nigga. <laughs> you can tell y'all fill out y'all faster. You ain't fill out your faster? I ain't fill out mine. Who filled out yours? Somebody. <laughs> I swear everything. Miss TSU, get off the phone. What you doing? Ordering some new boots? Nope. She talking to her horse. <laughs> <laughs> nah. She, she talking to that nigga she fuck with. Baby, I'm at the show. I promise. No, nah, no, nah, fuck that. You wore them white boots, didn't you? You got your ass on. Bitch, I'm going to kill you. He on the Where did line. you find them boots at? Burlington Coat Factory. Up under some shit. You found them boots up under some shit. They didn't even have no box. They were just clasped together at the top. Together. She could have stole them. She had to find the other one. One was over there by the shoes. The other one was in the meat section. They ain't even had no price on them. How much these is? I guess you just give Let us something. Let me scan the number. <laughs> just give us something. <laughs> I tell you one thing, no TSU. Y'all got some... <laughs> Beautiful women at this school, boy. Yes, y'all do. God damn. Yes, y'all do. I was seeing y'all walk in. I was like, nigga, I'm about to enroll. I seen about four of them with a waist trainer on, though. Oh, ladies. Much love to all the ladies who got their waist trainer on, but your stomach's still big. Whatever. You too young to wear ah! a waist trainer. 
Don't worry about like no waist cleaning, rat. ladies. <laughs> Said this is like a snack wrap, nigga. <laughs> you ever been to McDonald's and got one of those chicken snack wraps? <laughs> they don't be wrap right. <sighs> I fuck with this school, bro. I do. Y'all so stupid. Hey, fellas, real talk. Hey. Hey, ain't one of the craziest parts of being when you become an upperclassman in college, fellas, and the freshmen come in, and you be like, nigga, I don't want to be a nasty nigga, but this young bitch got the fattest ass ever. And they be so green. Which way to the calf? You be like, come on, baby, I'll show you. <laughs> come on. I'll show you exactly how to get there. Come on to the calf. Walk with me. Walk with me. What's your name? Yeah, all right. Yeah, where's you from? Okay. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> you's a pedophile. <laughs> That's how you be when you be in college, man. The freshman come in. I it's, went to school. It's cool I as long class. as you in school. But once you get out of school, all you niggas that graduated and still be on campus, you should be ashamed of yourself. Right. Freaky ass nigga. Get a job. Get a life. That's You're not being a real ass. alumni. You be walking around campus. Niggas know you don't go here no more. Wish over job, man. What's going down? Nigga, take your ass home, nigga. You at all the home basketball games. Go home. She done went and got her friend with some other big shoes. That's who? That's oh, last that's year. last year, Miss TSU. Look how far she got to sit back. That's fucked up. They ain't got her no seat. Yeah, go back there with everybody. Go sit by that other girl, the first ultimate. <laughs> OG, what you do? What you got your whole tuxedo on? What you here? He like, God damn. Nigga, I, yeah, I see you. That nigga the limo driver. <laughs> ah! Nah, you know who he look like? He look he like who? He looked like the nigga from Coming to America that sang, She's your queen to be. <laughs> Come on. He on the homecoming He on committee. the homecoming committee. Oh, okay. This so the whole that homecoming is. committee right here. So who y'all got coming for the concert? Who? Max O'Cream. Young Louie. Young Looty. Young Looty. He oh, finna start Ludi. all the fights in this bit. And who? Gunner. Oh, okay. That's what it is. And you gotta be careful when you come to an HBCU, cause some of them homecoming concerts be disrespectful. You be like, who we got? Uh, Jaquan coming. We got Chingy. We got Carl Thomas. <laughs> you can't disrespect Carl Thomas now. Carl Thomas go crazy. Which Carl Thomas song you like? With the curls. With the curls? The only song he had the with summer the curls. Rain. Summer Rain? What? I feel like you can only perform that in the summer, though. You can't sing Summer Rain in the fall, nigga. Look at the young children. They don't know nothing about that. Shit got quiet over there, didn't it? Who is Carl Thomas? Got to sing SpongeBob. They had Krusty Krayer. Peace up. <laughs> he keeps stupid. Look at the little white girl come down. Hey, little white girl, come on. Come on, enjoy yourself. Yeah, the white girl coming down. Hey, white girl, hey. This is her equipment. She's just checking up on it. Yeah, the lights still work. Hell no. So do y'all do this every year? Y'all had this event every year, like the midnight, late night comedy show? Who y'all had? Well, y'all, they had me last year. They had you last like year. I went, I went here, I wore here. I just wore here. Fuck y'all talking about. Hey, I'm nigga, who just here? You want here? Nigga, you just got here. Fuck y'all too much. Where the freshman at? Hey, freshman ladies, don't fuck around and get pregnant by a local this weekend. It'll happen to you. Don't One do of these it. niggas pull up on them swingers. You think that nigga go here? Nope. He is a dope boy from the I Fifth Ward. That's what that a local. From. Where the sophomores at? Them freaky motherfuckers right there. Some of them still freshmen, they lying. You know you ain't got the credits yet. They're gonna be uh, sophomores by the end of this semester. Ain't nothing wrong with being a repeated freshman, shit. Get start over. At least you're here. Juniors. Okay, about to graduate. Okay, okay. Right. Where the seniors, where the seniors? And you got your credits though, you got your credits. Right. Boy, what? when you said them credits, them but 11 people. Nah, makes right. You, you got to with... ask two questions when you're at HBCU. You say, we're the seniors. Then you got to say, we're the graduating seniors. It ain't ah! enough niggas. They were like, I am. Somebody lying. You're going to be mad Ooh, and shit when you go in there I'm to so get your... I'm so glad you asked that question. Why? Boy, because she jumped up and she was waving like that and their arm was soft. Like, ooh. 
That soft arm, you know how far with that soft arm. Ah, that little soft, that little pug, yeah. Look like a little water bag. Some of y'all graduating seniors gonna go to that line and get your cap and gown, they gonna hit your ass with the... <laughs> you say your name is what? That no, we don't, we don't have you on here, baby. But I told my mama that I was walking. Sorry, sorry, ma'am. You're gonna have to tell your mama that you lied because we don't have your name. That you walk at home. They're gonna hit your ass with that outstanding balance. Ah! Oh, yeah, that outs and, and listen, to, oh, yeah. to, I don't know if they go on at TSU, but if the campus police is in here, hey, man, fuck y'all for not letting us graduate from them goof ass parking tickets y'all be giving, nigga. You gotta pay your parking ticket balance before That's you graduate. Up. Yeah, they give you parking tickets. Parking tickets? On campus. I wish a nigga would write me a parking ticket at school. You don't get this shit? I got a scooter. You got to pay $10,000 a semester. Then they make, yeah, you're going to have to pay $190 for a parking pass. And ain't nowhere to park. Ain't that a bitch? I wonder what they had them little tables in the back for. Eating, y'all had oh, that food? food? Oh, because they ain't had no seats. I was like, niggas just supposed to be standing up? Oh, y'all got money, money. Y'all got food in this bitch. Oh, yeah, they doing it big. But it's Texas, my nigga. You did that, Miss TSU? You coordinated this right here? Okay, you did your shit. I fucks with it. That's why you get to wear the big boots. Because you a boss. Where you from, baby? Still should have got some old trees. Chicago? Okay. Anybody else in here from Chicago? Who we got in this motherfucker? I know, I know Texas South side, in here. West side. Houston in here. What Dallas said? What Dallas said? I already know it, y'all. Look at her. Her titty almost popped out. Hey, bro, Dallas niggas be everywhere except Dallas, don't yep. they? Yep. Them niggas don't never be in Dallas, just everywhere else. I'm from Dallas. But you're in San Antonio, nigga. What the fuck are you doing? Anybody from San Antonio here? One just nigga. One nigga. Proud. I do. I raise chickens. I do. Anybody from Galveston in this month? What about Austin? Shit. <laughs> oh, fucker, rain on a farm. With the most, with the mo, with the with the biggest. Y'all done ran out of places to ask. Yeah, you I know. Some little places now. What Beaumont at? Beaumont in this bitch. <laughs> Louisiana in this bitch. Okay. Mississippi in this bitch. What about Atlanta? ATL. We ain't come this far. Ain't <laughs> Shit. I'm from DC. I know it ain't no motherfuckers in here from where I'm ah! from. Just that one girl right there. Appreciate you. Nigga could come this far. They like tens it too far. Like. I love Houston. Nigga, like, I'm from there. What you say? We ain't say what? The fuck you What's the fuck say? is the four? California, baby. West oh, side, California? West Coast. Hold on, wait a minute. California? What's well, a lot of people from California? Of Damn. Y'all trying to get away. They ain't from no damn California. They mama moved down here when they was two years old. You been you from Houston. She from LA. Boy, you gotta see this shit. That police officer's shirt so small, you can see his undershirt. That oh, this shit. nigga right here. Hey, keep it 100, officer. Y'all be trying to fuck with the students. You think he gonna yes, answer that? Do. Yes, y'all do. Y'all know y'all Stop for he Stop it's before he tase you. Hey, I know it's too many bad women on this campus. I know y'all niggas better look, baby. Hey, uh. Now I would take you in, but that's how all of them do. They always want to put their. They don't be in talking to the student. They just be standing there talking to the teachers for four hours. You know, I studied a little biology. You know. <laughs> Before I got into <laughs> law enforcement, there ain't no police officer. I'm law enforcement. <laughs> you know, the police, the school police, ain't really the real police. Yeah, they are. No, they not. Nigga, all you, you go outside on the curb. <laughs> you can't do nothing over here. You almost broke that goddamn table. Yeah, Cut the table, dude. fake. Yeah, nah, that's real glass right there. That's auntie table. Well, that bitch missing the nail. <laughs> I'm we're not, not gonna fuck it up, stupid ass. Yeah. We're not gonna fuck it up. We know this gotta go back in somebody's apartment when we finish. Well, that going back to rental center, nigga. This is a nice ass couch though. That this bitch, shit is, that bitch decent center. and fuck. This is good. This is about a good about twelve fifty. Yup. This is the this the couch is where you get the most pussy at in college because you gotta sit there and watch that movie for an hour. That's if your Wi-Fi on. <laughs> hey, this thing. Oh, you ain't got no Wi-Fi. You got to have a hell of a game. <laughs> hey, 
You ever have one come to the crib and her three homegirls just be sitting on the couch looking stupid? Why do y'all do that, ladies? You got something to eat. Why do y'all do no. that? No. Hey, homegirl sitting on the couch. Homegirl is a motherfucker. And it's a big girl over there breathing heavy hell. What y'all finna do? Why I'm hungry. Do Why y'all do that to us, ladies? Y'all always be, hey, I'm gonna come, but my homegirl's coming with me. Y'all would not let us bring our homeboys to y'all house. You'd be like, yeah, my man coming with me. What the fuck y'all think going on over here? What y'all trying to run a train or They don't ever want to tell you how they look. How they look. I mean, she a good they person. They my friends. I don't hang with no ugly friends. All right. Then they bring the homegirl. She don't be ugly, but it be something wrong with her that you can't fuck with. Like, you look at her neck and she been shaving or some shit. Mm -hmm. She got eczema right here. You can't even lick her neck. Hey, this is the same couch you be sitting on when she tell you she ain't coming. When she tell you she can't make it through there tonight, you be on the floor in a dumbass position. See, man, you be bullshit. Play too much. You said you were coming, man. It's some... See, man, you play for Hey, when you in college, you know when they come through to really do it, fellas. She come through with them little shorts on, them little shorts. I don't even know what type of shorts. They be like them Russell shorts they out like of Walmart. Shorts. They call booty shorts. A little booty shorts and a t-shirt. She got that hair wrap on. You be like, and them flip flops. You be like, oh, Boy, she you got that so sweater. She got that sweater. She ain't got no shirt on under the sweater. It's just titties. Fella, fellas be playing that move. You play that little move through the shorts. You, through, you go through the bottom of the shorts, nigga. Well, you be so thirsty, you don't even be looking at what's on that t-shirt. See, you got to be a real that nigga. That t-shirt be a real, room. that's a real boyfriend t-shirt. Fellas, start reading that shirt. That shirt say TSU Football Athletic Department. <laughs> you know she ain't played no goddamn football. Where she get that Ow! shirt from? Shit huge. It be from another school and shit. She bitch travel. She's a travel whore. Salute to all the niggas up top that came late because y'all was drinking and smoking and shit. Y'all want to be get out of here early. Salute to y'all niggas up top. Them niggas cute dogs. Y'all cute dogs? I can tell. Them niggas up there look like they're ready to eat ass. Cute dog don't never know where to sit down. They just standing up. Them cute dog niggas will wear them boots everywhere, nigga. Them niggas be at the job interview. Hey, how you doing? Nigga, do you have on the probate boots at the... Boy, I seen a nigga at a funeral with no motherfucker. That nigga was crying like, I'm going to lose somebody. <laughs> Hey, dog, I'd be scared to have a cute dog at my funeral, man. Them niggas fuck around, be carrying the casket outside. Somebody ride past playing Atomic Dog. Them niggas gonna drop your casket. <laughs> Hell nah. You got Y'all got all the divine nine here? Y'all niggas is stupid. All right, okay. So we already got the cute dogs. Where the cute dogs at? Hey, there they go. Up they go. top. Where the AKAs? Boy, them AKA sound like your brakes gone bad, don't it? I need to take my shit to get a tune up, nigga. My, my shit sound like an AKA, nigga. I got my motherfucking brakes is fucked up. My rotors is bad. <laughs> Bro, they saying ski week. Ski, yeah, ski. I wee. thought they were saying wee wee like they want some wee wee. Nah. nah. They saying ski on me, ski. That's what you gotta do, fly. Ski! If you ever if you ever get to hit an AKA, hey fellas, if you ever get the blessing to hit an AKA when you about to nut, just be like, hey baby, I'm about to ski. <laughs> Where the Delta's Hold on, where the Delta's at? Where the Delta's at? This shit sound like a stupid owl. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, Zetas. I'm a child of a Delta. Where the Zetas at? That's why I have an elephant trunk. It's just one? Well, hey, baby. Salute to you. You are a special person. What are the ones that's like rode in? The blues? What's SG the one? Rose. Yeah. They're the, one, they're the one that kind of like had to sign a permission slip. 
Who else is in here, Chico? Let's see. All right, where the cap is at? Y'all yeah. stupid ass. <laughs> them niggas, boy. Them niggas, them niggas get sexy for no reason, fly. Them niggas get sexy for no reason. Them niggas be anywhere. You be at the motherfucker, you be in the grocery <laughs> store, them niggas be like, hey man, what organization you play? You already know what it is. <laughs> that kick, nigga. Do that kick all Look, he's trying to do that. Go hit that bit, bro. Go hit that bit one Come time, on, bro. For the homecoming. Come on. He can't get that low. This nigga paying too tight. Uh-huh, he can't get that low. There it is. That's and it. Then, that nigga did that roll, he was like, yep, that that did, that's all I'ma do it. That nigga did that roll, that nigga titty started shaking. He was like, <laughs> Chico, there was titty over there. Ah! <laughs> that nigga had a see-through church shirt on. This nigga tripping. All right. Uh, what other was that? Uh, what a band fraternity. What a KK sound. Where, where y'all at? Hey, they got the coldest move. There you go, nigga. Uh, what a who? Where y'all at? Sigmas. Where the Sigmas at? Yup. Y'all, no, nah, y'all don't that know each other. Had to answer his own response. I know. Yeah, he ain't know. <laughs> Them niggas don't know each other. What? Hey, huh? What he say? Somebody what? You iotas. Hey, salute to you, bro. Hold up, you just named three hey, niggas. Hey, hey, I salute to the iotas. I don't know where y'all be at, but y'all got the coldest move of all the fraternities. I don't give a what fuck move, nobody. Bro? This shit here. What the fuck is that? I don't know. You That's do that the in the fight, you're going to get your ass whooped. I'll tell you that. <coughs> All right, where the alphas at? Any alphas in here? All right. Y'all niggas is corresponding. Okay. Salute to the alphas. I'm an alpha, man. You're you know alpha. what I mean? So, yeah, I'm do an alpha. Do your shit there, alpha. You say what? Do your shit there, nigga, alpha. I'm, nigga, I ain't got the knees for that shit no more, nigga. Oh. I fuck around and try to step in here, nigga. I might boo-boo a little bit. My shit fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, bounce is loose. Hey, salute to the alphas, though. Hey, but, hey man, hey, bros, real quick piece of advice. You niggas don't have to be so serious about everything. You niggas will wear dress shoes to a basketball game. You're like, yeah, check up. Like, nigga, if you don't take them Who, who the niggas that do this up, shit? The band for that, right? That's the KK side. KK yeah. side. Yeah, they, they, they cold, too. Side yeah, they go one Where right there. Where y'all at, man? Y'all represent, man? Nah, they at band practice. You know, they got to get ready for homecoming. Ah, damn. That, 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 that little move y'all got right there, that shit's so smooth. Yeah, that, that, that's Shout slide. out to everybody who not in no organization. You got like three friends. You got like, you got like three <laughs> friends, but y'all keep a blunt and something to drink. Y'all eat good. You know what we call them? Hold on, hey. I got some more shout outs. Me, five, me. Shout out, shout out to all the women who do hair in the dorm. Right. They be doing half frying fish on a George Foreman. How the fuck she did that? Shout out to the ones who tried to join a fraternity, but you got scared. Yeah, they was almost in there until they asked for the money. <laughs> yeah, that money will make you quit. Especially if you're a young motherfucker. You'll be like, yeah, it'll be 15. I heard they be spanking niggas in them. In them oh, them. yeah. But no, no. no they they be like, fuck! No, nah, they don't do that. They don't do that. The divine nine. Do you want to join? Yes! Fuck! <laughs> Non hazing organization. See, see, what? Hold up, Chico. Do you want to join? Yes, Pa. <laughs> Get off your knees, nigga. How many times are you going to hit me? You're not supposed to be on your knees, man. Hold up, bro. One more time. <laughs> Do you want to join? Yes, Pa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, My shit. ass hurt. <laughs> Get off your knees. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to the white man right here. What's up, white man? How you doing? Slap your ass. He acting like he don't hear me. The white dude over there acting like he owned the gym. What time is this over? Yeah, what's up? What you what you do, sir? What do you do? Whatever the fuck I want. Oh, you? He owned a community church down the street. Don't ask me any fucking questions. I'll shut this shit down. He got four people at his church. Y'all band turned ah, up? Y'all got a dope ass band? It's new. That's really who make the homecoming. Your football team can get blown the ah, fuck out, but if the band right. Oh, y'all football team some shit? 
Y'all oh. put my team ass. Hold up, you talking? You talking about the band? Let me play my band right quick, man. Play me some pimping. We at home coming. We got a real band though. We what, got a y'all drum majors in here. Where y'all drum majors at? Uh. Uh oh, there go one. Uh. Come here, drum major. Hey. Eh, 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 eh. Squat your stuff. Eh, eh, Look at him. Eh, he eh, like, yeah, eh, we in the band. Eh, that glad boy, eh, get your stupid ass off. A hey, is homecoming. Yo. At TSU. Yo. At TSU. Yo. At TSU. I said it's homecoming. At TSU. At TSU. At TSU. I said it's homecoming. At TSU. You. At TSU. They got an ugly ass haircut. I tell you that. I said it's homecoming. At TSU. That Mr. TSU right there. At TSU. I say. You. Fuck him up. Who over there? That nigga doing the Spider Man. Hey. Fuck him up one time. Hey. Fuck him up one time. Come on. Hey. Fuck him up one time. Hey, do the Spider Man one more time. Look. You. Uh. Uh, 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 uh. Now fly away. <laughs> Do the Spider Man and fly away. What the fuck wrong with this nigga? <laughs> what the fuck? Ah! He don't want to dance. Yes! I'm free! Ah! Mama, let me go somewhere. <laughs> Alright, nigga, you drum major of the year, nigga. Hey, that other hey. man. Hey, that nigga wasn't gonna start till you did that little land, little back thing. <laughs> oh, you can't see. You boy. saw how the other nigga showed up. Who won a dance battle? <laughs> that nigga fell on purpose so we can see him. This nigga stupid. stupid. Y'all nigga dumb. Oh, shit. Y'all nigga, oh, we got a photographer. Do we Dude. have. Dude go crazy. Well, y'all support system is strong down here. He he shoot he shoot pictures. He'll never take none for y'all. Hey, all right, let me see something here. Take a picture, nigga. You gotta act like I'm doing something. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Look, look at the white man. Ooh. How many times? That shit How hard, Chico. You hear that? What's that? How many more nice, minutes? Nice vibe right there. Ooh. You uh -huh. fuck with that? Oh, yeah. All the great aunts. I'm looking for a girl at TSU. Yeah, with yeah, the yeah. big fat booty. I say what? Hey, I'm looking for a girl at TSU with the big fat booty. With the big fat booty. Cause it's homecoming, y'all. Come on. It's homecoming, y'all. Say what? Say what? It's homecoming, y'all. It's homecoming. With the white boots. With the white boots. With, with the, the white boots. boots. I wanna fuck white boots. You with wanna the white boots? I wanna fuck white boots. And white. I wanna buy some white shoe polish for boots. <laughs> white boots. White boots, white boots, a white boots, a white boots, a white boots, a white boots. I said my booby wearing white boots, a white boots. I said that those the right boots, the white boots. Yeah, white boots, the white boots. Dancing in the club in the white boots, the white boots, white boots, white white boots, white boots, white the white boots with the. White, 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 the white, white, white boots. White, white, the white, white, white boots. Look at black people dance for anything. White boots. She got the. Hey, what that wall y'all been doing? What was that? What's that called? They don't even know. White boots, the white boots. She said she had those. Uh, looking like the children choir. I know. It looked like somebody. Ah! 
like somebody farted and y'all trying to wipe the smell away. White boots. White. The white. White boots. White boots. White boots. White boots. They go the nigga that fell. They go the nigga that fell. They go the nigga that fell. They go that. No, nigga, we talking about two stupid ass. Hey, my man. What the fuck? Got Colin Kaepernick right here. In your hair. I say, my man, what the fuck is that? In your hair. What type of hairstyle is that? That's the goddamn nigga Matrix hairstyle right flats. there. What is that, nigga? Come here, let me see. The nigga Maybe. walked in and said, I just want to get him fucked up. <laughs> nigga. What in the world is that? Nah, that shit gonna be hard when it finish. When it finish? That, that, they gonna, you trying to get some dreads? You trying to get like me? I'm bald head, nigga. You don't want to get like come. me. Now, you know what? That's bullshit that they gonna... Hey, man, gotta... look at this, man. They gonna start figuring out hair loss dreaming after we don't have hair no more. Exactly. Keeps. Maybe, maybe we should get some keeps. No, nah, it's too late for us to keeps. Ours need to be called gone. No, nah, man, we get... Uh, yeah, we, if they don't come out with gone, then we, we, we ain't got nothing going. But get you some keeps so you don't end up like us. Hey. Because uh, we two out of the three men that experience male pattern baldness. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. The good news, with today's advancements in science, keeps offers proven treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss and help you keep the hair you have at half the cost of your local pharmacy. Right. You know why we're bald? Because we didn't use keeps. Yeah. So we didn't get to keep our hair. And guess what? You don't have to go broke to avoid going bald. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there. Some of you may have tried them before, but probably never for this price. Trust me, man, for $10 a month, it's well worth keeping the hair that you had. Plus, Keeps now offers a prescription shampoo to keep your scalp healthy too. You don't even have to let nobody know you're losing it. You could just get it online and go straight to your consumer to your head from the all that. Fellas, prevention is key. Keeps treatments really works. They are up to 90% effective at reducing and stopping future hair loss. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. So act fast. Many men experiencing hair regrowth with Keeps treatment. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Make sure you hit the website. Keep your hair. Trust me. Or you could be like me, it's up to you. See me? This is the result of not using Keeps. So if you are ready to not look like me, then you need to go to keeps.com backslash 85 south so you can not look like me. Hey man, calm down. Nah, because I don't like the fact that they didn't came out with it after I lost my head. It was them when I first started going ball. It, Make sure you hit the website for slash 85 south. Nah, you you, you want to put your hat back on, don't let them know. Nah. Keeps.com, bitches. Confidence level is high. I know when you wake up in the morning, you be like, I'm ugly as fuck. Ah! You can't even look good with that shit. Where the weed man at? Do he go to this school? Say what? Ah! Hey, where the weed man at? Hold up. Do he go to this school? Yep, he a six year I senior. Said, where the weed man at? Do he go to this school? I'm trying to get a little weed and go smoke some soup. Dude. Hey, the police listening. Yeah. I don't get no fuck. Because if they pull me over looking for it, it's going to get tucked. Hey, right yo, hello. You know yeah. the nigga can't get caught. Don't yeah. even keep no receipt. Don't keep up with what I bought. Yeah. Mr. Officer, yeah. I ain't breaking no law. I yeah. just want to smoke some weed and have some fun with y'all. Hey, yo, yeah. hello. We at a college with shit. these kids. They ain't got money like that. They just might be smoking me, but yeah. I don't know if it's true. I'm trying to find me some gas, and yeah. I'm smoking with a girl with a big old ass. And you, Ooh. Know, Ooh. Cause you know how we do. Ooh. The 85 South Show, you know that's the crew. And everybody here, hey, you know we're not bumming. We NTSU, and it's fucking homecoming. Oh, hey. It's the homecoming. I ain't gonna play, y'all. You already know, I ain't gonna stay, y'all. And I'ma do this one time all day, y'all. Hey, white girl, black girl, tryna knock your boots off. 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 I'm trying to knock your boots off. I'm trying to, I'm trying to. My stupid ass said white girl. White girl. I'm stupid. You meant to say white boots. I meant to say white boots. White boots. White, white, 
white boots, white boots. Oh my goodness! Hey. <laughs> Let me cut the AC off here and start blowing smoke. Oh, I didn't even see we was on the big screen right Man, what there, happened man? to the AC? Y'all just stopped? We run at the top? They only got 30 minutes for the AC. Yeah, it did get They bought the gym, but they only bought 30 minutes of AC. <laughs> it's a bunch of niggas in here. That's why I got hot. We just start. These trees yeah. starting to come alive. Shout out to all the dudes in here that saw your sad chick in here with her boyfriend. Couldn't say nothing, though. Because they both using his car. Exactly. Who? Minnie? Miss Bennett. Miss Bennett, where she at? Where Miss Bennett at? Miss Bennett! Miss Bennett! Boy, Miss Bennett must be fine the way Boy, you keep talking Ms. about Bennett, it. Miss Bennett, fine, fine. For real? Yes, Kugel fine. Let me see her. Where you at, Miss Bennett? Miss Bennett. Oh, Ms. she in the box. Miss Bennett. Bennett in the booth. Ooh, Miss Bennett. Miss Bennett! Miss Bennett, Ms. Bennett, Ms. Bennett up there Bennett. with that Miss Bennett. Ooh. Ms. Ms. Miss Bennett. That's that cougar right there. Y'all don't know nothing about that. For real? Rawr! When she take, when she, all these kids go to class. <laughs> Me and Miss Bennett have a class of our own. Boy, stop playing. Every she time I walk in there, be music like this. Sit down, young man. You remember that time, Miss Bennett, when I came to your office? Ooh, I ain't gonna tell them that. Talk to your lady, DC. She thought I was a Q dog. I'm sorry, Miss Bennett. Look at Miss Bennett you. up there. She up there excited. Boy, y'all better leave Miss Bennett alone. Miss Bennett followed me on Facebook. She did. She be poking me. I said, stop, the church people gonna see. <laughs> I'm trying to be a deacon, stop! Shout out to everybody in here that be fucking on the twin size bed. Fucking no. on twin size bed. Well, much oh, love to everybody who don't have a roommate and you just push both beds together. Fuck on the twin size bed. With your feet hanging off, feet hanging off. Gotta hear from the side, you being that bitch like this. Feet hanging off, feet hanging off. Twin size bed, twin size bed. Feet hanging off, feet twin size hanging bed. off. Twin size bed. Hitting it from the side, ass on the wall, and it's cold, but you gotta do you what got you gotta do. Move. You got one move. You got one move. One move. <laughs> one move. You got one move. What's the move? Hit it from the side, ass on the wall. Hit it from the side, ass on the wall. Hit it from the side, ass on the wall, ass on the wall. Hit it from the side, hit it from the side, hit it from the side. One move, one move. Switch it up, switch it up, switch it up. Other side, other side. Switch it up, switch it up, switch it up. Other side, other side. Hit the other side. I got a big dick, so I can do that. Oh. Oh. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it from the side, ass on the wall. Hit it from the side, ass on the wall. Hit it from the side, ass on the wall. Switch it up. Other side. Other side. Other you are late. <laughs> Other side. What the fuck, drama? Come on now, there you go. <laughs> That's enough. You couldn't do all your moves. You just had a little bit of room. It's a, it's a twin bed. Fuck your rhythm up sometime when your ass hit the wall, that long stroke. Hey, y'all got the nasty dorm here? Shout out to that roommate who be listening to you fuck just laughing. <laughs> y'all nasty, y'all nasty. Ah. Oh, hey, listen. Hey, you look up her roommate on the other bed like this. 
Hey, ladies love. They Hit love it from to watch the side, it. ass on the wall. You is stupid. I talked to my bitch Bennett, my mic broke. Shout out to the two presidents. Who is the two presidents? Y'all got Marcus two presidents? Marcus and who? UPC oh. and SGA? They got two presidents. They could make their mind up. <laughs> Much love to the two presidents. What are two presidents? Have? Shout out to the treasurer, the secretary. Who won't everybody, put the money? Man. Everybody that work in the administration's office. Fuck all that. Shout out to the regular students in this motherfucker. Who? Shout out to the people who work Every in the day. front desk at the dorm who be checking people in. Oh, the RAs. Salute to all the RAs. Salute to the cool RAs that don't be on that bullshit. Knocking all on your door. You hey, smoke. man, I smell smoke coming out your room. Bitch, because we smoking. Get your goof ass down the hall. Good weed. Look, hey, at, do, it. look at the campus police. Hey, do they have like them rules for the freshman dorms where you can't have girls in there after a certain time? Do you sneak them in like we used to? Boy, I remember a nigga had a bitch here in the dry one time. True story. Ah! Swear to God. She got in the dry to come get that dick. I was like, boy, you a legend, Slim. But you Freshmen don't give a shit about no curfew. They have company at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. They don't give a fuck. Oh, that afternoon fuck is a college special. That fuck in between your 1.30 and your 3.30? Ooh, you fuck around and, and get it out the way early so you can catch Chick-fil-A before class? Oh, Maybe. yeah. Thank you, nigga. Your Don't microphone me. broke again, nigga? There we go. Yeah, they cut it off when I started talking about me being and the shit got real. Ooh, they trying to censor you. It's all good. We got any single ladies in here tonight? Single grown ladies. Single grown ladies. Any single grown we, ladies that like not us, about though? That. We looking 18. for the ones that like us. We ain't looking for the ones uh -oh. that just single. Grown ladies, we ain't talking about you've been 18 for two months. I ain't talking about that shit. You still a child, bitch. Ladies, yeah. make some noise if your screen ain't cracked. Fuck that. I want you if your screen cracked. That mean the pussy good right there. I'm that crack you. screen mean the pussy good. Because a nigga good. done grabbed their phone and broke it, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> make some noise if you pay your own phone bill. You lying like a motherfucker. You know damn well you don't pay your phone, but you be like, Mama, I'm sorry I went over to data again this month. Can't stand goddamn having to talk to a bitch on Wi-Fi. Your phone off again. Shout out to all the bad bitches who are counting the negative right now. Ah, motherfucker on fire. <laughs> They'll make a count like, bitch, put something in here. <laughs> oh, them overdraft fees is scurry in college, boy. <laughs> You ever get hit with that overdraft fee and don't know, try to go get something to eat? You swipe your shit, your shit be like, yeah, it's not going through. You check your account, your shit say negative $38. How you get negative 38 though? Yeah, because they charge you when they take the money out. They take the money out, then charge you for not having it. See, if you get a like Walmart card, you ain't got to go through that. Your shit just ain't going to go through if you ain't got it. Hey. Shout out to everybody who in college that's broke. You don't know what to do. You just take a nap and hope shit figure itself out. <laughs> Oh, everybody that go to sleep. That college broke, boy. That shit's special. That, that shit college real. broke real. That college broke and make you ride to the club with six niggas in the car just so y'all get there. Yep. They ain't pay the bill on the sound. White man get mad. He done got tired. Hold up, where you go? He done left. He don't even get he working the camera now. Uh, see? Yeah. How you doing, sir? Yeah. What yeah. department you work for? Cause they got you doing a lot of he shit. He don't work for the school. He work for a church. I'm telling you. He's like, yeah, asshole. Fuck you. All right. They look like the white man that invented vegan dog food. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's your name, white man? He ain't even white. Huh? What he are you? Look like you invented vegan dog food. Ah! What? What? What's your nationality? I Colombian. You. Oh, he got I the cocaine. You. Better that leave that nigga alone and cut your finger off. I know. What you said? You call me white? Come here. Any uh, Hispanics in here? Salute to y'all. Where y'all at? <laughs> nigga, sit your ass down. You ain't Spanish. He don't even know no Spanish. Say some Spanish. Hey, you got. What you say? 
He said he'll fire your ass up. Now that little ass jean jacket, egg lad, you can't even go in your pocket. <laughs> you'll grab my phone for me right <laughs> That nigga, ah! that nigga said, nah, fuck that. I ain't going up there, nigga. I you better not. Do. You gotta take that jacket out just to take a shit. Come on, nigga. You got the opportunity. It's homecoming. Come on, make it. You'll be a that. legend. I ain't gonna come do that. Come on up there if you want it. If you want it, come on up there. Look at here. all this friend. Go on there and get fucked up. Come on. <laughs> you, got ah! the, you got the greatest roaster to do it right here in front of you. This will make you special. This nigga bringing his goddamn driver. This nigga, I ain't got a fat ass driver. Why you get your stupid ass on? That's my cousin. Should I get him one? He go wherever I go. Oh shit. Bring oh on up here. shit. Come on up here. Ah, ah. Go ahead, bro. I ain't tripping. Go ahead. Do what y'all want. Do what y'all ain't gonna get. Then letting you know your beard, little hell. I'm on your ass. I'm quick. All oh, right. That little ass fake ass rose. Hell wrong with you. Ain't nobody die. Ugly ass butt. Bro, you don't on TV no way, stupid ass real, butt. Boy. What? Your jeans small as hell. My jeans small. <laughs> Tight ass. I can't stand talking to nigga with plaque on their teeth. Ugly ass <laughs> You too old to not be brushing your teeth. That shit hurts me. I be like, I hope he feel that. I know he feel that. You got to feel it. You know when you ain't brush your teeth. All right, driver. Come here, valet driver. Come here. Go ahead, bro. I ain't saying that, bro. Got on your bowling shoes. Them ain't even Gucci. Come on, say it. Come on, say it in the mic. I said these boot cut ass jeans over them nasty ass jeans. I think ass about ass this suit in three different places. <laughs> Yeah, let me get my jacket out of J.C. Penney's. I got my pants out of Macy's. I couldn't find a shirt, so I borrowed it. Ugly. Now turn the music off. This is serious business. Hey, fellas. Grown men. You remember when you was 20, you could fuck all night? Yeah. You remember that shit? Mm -hmm. A lot of men can't fuck all night no more. If you want to go back to the days where you can fuck all night, I know the people at BlueChew.com and they have given me a promo code so me and my partners can goddamn go get the Blue Chew pills and fuck these women all night long because that's what they want these days. Really? Go to BlueChew.com and use the code 85 South Show and get you a discount on your chewable BlueChew.com pills because they good and they get make your meat get hard. Harder. <laughs> Not saying that nobody's lacking in that department. But I'm saying, if you want to hit her with the rock, hit her with the motherfucking rock. Hey. Go to BlueChew.com. Hey. Use the promo code 85 South. Now, I'm not saying that this is FDA approved or nothing, but you experiment with shit all the time. Why wouldn't you want to experiment with BlueChew.com? If you out of luck and you having problems getting it up, uh, here's what you need to do. BlueChew. Blue. Chew. Blue. Chew.com, go get you some. Said bluechew.com, and go get you some. You can make love to your lady. Come on, y'all. For a long, long time, and hit her with that wood. I swear to God, I ain't lying. It's a sexual stimulant, it make your meat get hard. It's a sexual stimulant, it make your meat get hard. You graduated in the eighth grade with that same shirt. You still ain't lost weight. Ugly ass nigga, buddy. <laughs> ah! You quit the football team to join the band. Stupid ass, boy. <laughs> you play the baritone. Stupid ass. <laughs> ah! That nigga quit the football team to join the band. But them ain't even the real two chain shoes, egg lab, but I'm on your ass. Are oh, y'all gonna talk in the mic or no? Nah, he ain't gonna talk. You stay off campus, but you walk here. Egg lab, boy. They see that nigga walking fast as hell, but I'm finna go to this show, boy. <laughs> sir, slow down. Slow down, sir. <laughs> hey, boy, I can't be late. <laughs> 
Hey, them niggas ready to get the fuck out of here. He said, look, do we got to sign something? We ready right, to go. Girl, just, I was just getting warmed up, too. That nigga smell He's like a Buick. <laughs> you had the chance. You could have ah! You could have made yourself a legend that up here doing homecoming. That nigga homecoming. smell like mock balls and Buick seats. Y'all leave them niggas alone, bro. My nigga with the jacket on had his uh, shirt tucked under his titty a little bit. That nigga got that good H&M suit on, nigga. That's that H&M special right there, nigga. $30 for the top and bottom, $60 for the whole suit. <laughs> I'm telling you, we had a three-piece, three different stores. Is there any parties going on tonight? Where the party at? At the East Nightclub? Eve Nightclub? 5 -0. Live Oak. Live Oak. Fuck that. Who having a party at the dorm tonight, nigga? Look at Man, that. Man, fuck all that. Who got a car that'll pull up? I'm talking about no check engine light, though. I need you to be able to get back where the fuck you came from. Bro, we got to get ready to wrap this shit up. Yeah, we got to get ready We got any up. questions? You can't come yeah. see me and break down, on? bitch. You got to go back. <laughs> Hold up, we can't, hold up. Stupid. I fuck that side, that side, that's how the ghetto side right there. That's Shit. the ghetto side? Nah, ghetto we side still right got there. it right here on this side. That the ghetto we side. We still turned up on that side, we this won. This side right here, high, but they got things to do. I fuck with this side. Hell yeah, yeah, you see them dipping out. They'll pull up. Hey, ladies, real quick, if you like a nigga, go ahead and do it. Fellas, if you like a girl, go ahead and let her know. Hopefully she'll do it, because it's homecoming. She yeah. Y'all ready? Scrap it up. Be safe, TSU. TSU, hold up. <laughs> hey, salute to y'all. Yeah. Happy homecoming. TSU. Y'all be safe. Salute to TSU. Love y'all. We love y'all, TSU. Be safe out there, 85, baby. 85, 85. It's the 85 South Show. TSU, love, love, I said TSU. we love y'all. Love y'all, TSU. It's the 85 South Show. Hey, 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 hey. Happy homecoming. Happy homecoming to all the TSU students. Fuck, fuck you too, nigga. You ain't shit. You ugly as it. Nigga gave me his fuck. Oh, your shit broke. She said she like a nigga. We out here. DC, go over there. We out here. TSU, we in the building, bitch. Was this a story? Hey, she liked me. This nigga phone broke and he gave it to him. Oh, it's working now. There we go. Her shit was broke at first. I had to take the phone. She had an old picture of a nigga. We out here, TSU. Oh, crack screen. Ooh. Your shit ain't up, though. We got the crack screen, that mean the Gucci good. She got the crack screen, that Woo, mean the Gucci good. Wait a minute, wait. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho, back up, y'all, she about to die. Uh -huh. We out here, CSU. There we go, this shit working now. We out here, bitch, bitch, yeah. She say she love me. 
I love her too. <laughs> she playing. Yeah, bro. I just took her phone because I like her hat. Her hat dope. God damn! What the fuck you do with this shit on your phone? We out here, CSU, we out here, homecoming, baby. God damn. God damn. She just forced her phone in my hand, boy. Oh, wait. I did your shit already. That was her phone? Your shit broke. Hold up, hold up. We out here. It's homecoming at TSU. We Wait live. a minute. Yeah. Who shit is this? I'm going to whoop your ass for hitting me with this goddamn phone. This nigga phone fucked up, but we out here, though. She threw this goddamn phone at me. I'm going to whoop my ass. There we go. We out here. TSU homecoming, baby. She got a whole camera in on her shit. Say this. There we go. Snapchat. Snapchat. Yeah. We out here. TSU homecoming, baby. We live. Yeah, she excited. My nigga been standing right here for 20. This nigga was serious. I had to get my man straight right here. Real nigga, he was patient. Salute to my nigga. Salute to my man who fall this is. Nigga got the blonde hair like the Golden Lords. We live. Yeah, we live. TSU, baby. We out here. Damn, what type of phone she got? Her shit say 5G on it. You got that good service. Yeah, turn that shit up. Turn that shit up. Don't yeah. motherfucking yell at me. TSU, we is live. TSU, we still live at the homecoming show. Get that shit, Chico Bean. Yeah. Chico Bean spit that motherfucking yeah, rap off the top I of say, the dome. We got these pretty ladies standing at the front with their phones. I'm wondering which one would like to take a young nigga home. My name is Chico. I'm spitting on the phone right now. I don't know who phone it is, but it's about to go down. I'm about to pass it back. And I kick the rap, it's TSU homecoming, bitch, and that's a fact. Here we go, baby girl, you know it's true. This nigga arm long as fuck, goddamn, my dude. Chico Bean, what you talking about? We at TSU, ain't no walking out. And the people said, hey, get on my snap. So I had to talk shit with my old school rap. I had this shit that I was really, really liking. Outside here, everybody fighting. This was up? We live at TSU. Yeah. Oh, we bitch. in this bitch. I yeah. said, yeah. We in that bitch. I said, yeah. Salute to everybody at TSU. At TSU. Say what? Salute to everybody at TSU. I already did, though. Say what? At TSU, I got you, boo. I got you, Lord, baby. We live at TSU. We live. We live 85. 
Yeah. It's the 85 South Show. This nigga right. It's the coldest oh, this podcast. this nigga got money right here. He got the Louis Vuitton shit. This nigga got money. Hey, hey, I'm going to steal this. She got the camera. I think I need to steal it. I think I need to steal it. Hey, she, she got, got the, the camera. camera. I think I need to steal it. DC, say what's up one time. I said, I think I'm about to steal this. Oh, cause everybody feel this shit. Who's is this? Who's is this? That's you? Okay. Oh, 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 oh. wait. Hey, I'm we, about to, we got it. Relax. I'm about to start going through these pics and these phones. See what y'all taking pictures of, yeah, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's is this? Who's is this? She just gave me her What's phone up? and the phone screen cracked. Oh. What's up? What's up? <laughs> this nigga say, I'm on 4%, hey. bro. I'm on 4%. Jasmine just texted you. Well, a nigga, now you on three. She say she got it. I don't know if she's telling the truth. She say she got it. We gonna see though. Salute to my man. Salute to my nigga right here. Love to you. I don't know how I'm gonna get her her phone back, but she passed it up. I don't know how I'm gonna get her her phone back, and she passed it up. She she got long arms though. She might be able to grab this motherfucker. Hey, give me that shit. Give me that. Give me that shit. Give me another one. I don't know. Hold up. Hey, y'all say what's up to the 85 South Show. Yeah, y'all gotta say what's up. We saying what's up to y'all. I forgot who phone this is. Who phone is this? He just landed. No, Joe. Oh, he ain't gonna make it. No I think he was with one of. Oh, Europe he's at Hobby. He's at Hobby. Yeah, yeah, it's still it's still time consuming, but he may make it. Okay, because Hobby. Hobby's closer. Okay. You can freestyle. You got it. They ask some questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. You want to take the stairs, the elevator? Yeah. How you want to do? Okay. Let's break it. He's going to HOU. That's Hobby. Yeah, that's Hobby. Two, 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 please. Can I ask you? Let us come back and get you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Wow, you could have screwed. Sorry. Y'all got a big game tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Competing teams. Wait, what? The Braves in the Cardinals play tomorrow. Oh, he's talking nine. baseball. I didn't want to talk baseball. No, no, oh, okay. no. I was like, <laughs> we, we, we should have won that last one. We should. But y'all are Astros fans, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know the MLB. No, we're crazy. You know the MLB. I don't know what time we're talking about. Welcome. 
What's your name? Naya. Naya, what's up? Nice to meet you. What's up? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, as you can see, we kind of pack up for y'all. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, we are all student publications here, so many of us would like to possibly get where y'all are one day. Um, this is when you get to You don't, I don't want to get where you Oh, for sure. We got you. Um, so yeah. Kat, you can take it away. Hey. Yes. We got journalism students, um, RTF, radio, radio, television, and film, and entertainment and recording, music industry. Really? Y'all got yep. a whole department for entertainment? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes. Who's taking that class? Anybody in ERM? Yeah, Entertainment? Yeah, it's a whole school for it. It's actually yeah, the School of Communications. Mm -hmm. And there's actual org dedicated to it called the ERM Alliance. Okay. Does it focus more on the production side or the business side? Uh, a little bit of both because we have students that kind of, you know, go in between. Right. So I'm Kat Gray. I'm the yearbook editor-in-chief. Um, we have, like, multiple student media outlets in here. We have TSU Studios. We have TSU Herald. We have the TSU Yearbook. Um, I don't know if anybody in here is from KTSU. Got KTSU over there. KTSU, KTSU, KTSU over there. So that's our KTSU. Radio station. Yes. yes. Okay. Oh, y'all got like a whole like yeah, student radio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, student radio here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is our um, our newspaper office right here across. I'm the editor in chief over there. So okay. yeah, we got a whole department. We got a studio in our school of communications where we film our shows. The whole deal. What's up? Yep. Man, congratulations. That Thank is you. really good to hear. Because we need a lot of us in media. So can you just go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, let me, uh, I'll introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Chad Oubre. Um, I am the co-founder of 85 South Media, along with Carlos Miller, uh, DC Young Fly, uh, and, you know, the rest of the guys that you see, Joseph Newman. And then, obviously, if you guys watch the show, 85 South Media uh, created and produced the intellectual property of the 85 South show that you guys see in the podcast format, YouTube format. Um, so basically, uh, my role includes, my role includes uh, obviously, managing calendars, operations, producing the show, um, launching more opportunities from 85 South Media, from the apparel, uh, to introducing new talent. Um, yeah, just basically frontlining everything for the business that we built from the ground up. Uh, and this is Ryan Pham. I'll let him introduce himself as well. I'm Ryan Pham. I'm the tour and production manager for the live show component of 85 South. So Chad mentioned there's a few different uh, business lines, but I am kind of uh, in charge of operations for the touring side of the business. And that's, that's Craig Greggs. He is our assistant director and he directs other content for us as well. So within... 85 South Media, we not only produce the show that y'all see, there's different formats that we roll out more content, we're introducing new content as well. So Craig takes uh, a lot of direction and control in that space and capacity as well. Um, so I don't have anything really traditional to say. I, I think it'd be easier if you guys had some questions. Yeah, and, I, that. and I'm sure you do good. Yeah, um, and it was really important for me to, to be able to do something like this. I didn't go to a uh, historically black college. I really wish I did. Um, in the school that I did go to, um, the media department was not nearly as big as what you guys are representing right now. So that's exciting for me to see. I also think it's important for us to be involved in media because obviously we understand that media controls messaging. Um, and I honestly believe that media is your elevator to break through to a lot of opportunities that you can create for yourselves, especially in the digital space, in the online space. Um, and I can go on and on, so I'll let y'all get into that, but I'm really excited to, that you guys are, if it's in journalism, radio, any sort of broadcast, man. M messaging is extremely important, um, from tone to context um, to experience. So when you guys, when you see people that look like yourself, we understand what it means to have a grandmother that made us to go to church every Sunday. We understand what it means to have maybe a single parent that is super strict, and we're not afforded the same opportunity, so we have to... Uh, be guided or talked to and spoken to in a certain type of way. So when you have somebody that is controlling that message, you can communicate a little more effectively to other people. So I'll let y'all go from here. So where y'all want to start? So if y'all don't mind, we're going to go ahead and get and, started. And if, yeah, if you don't mind, can you make sure you give me your name? I want to make sure I address you properly and, and show you the proper respect. And, and share what publication you're with and introduce Yes, y'all are free to ask questions. For sure. Just give your introduction first. For sure. Uh -huh. I'm the yearbook editor in What's up, Kat? 
So, Chad, in the Hot Friends podcast, you talk about being ahead of the curve when you guys were creating content. Like, yeah. y'all were kind of the first to do that. Yeah. So, how do you stay constant with the internet being mostly content-based right now? Yeah. Let me, um, let me ask you two questions. So, being ahead of the curve, I was speaking into the context of my business partner, uh, Joseph Newman, who directs the show. We had created a content company, which was some five, six, seven years ago, prior to 85 South Show. What our job was, and I'm sure you guys, it's everywhere now. You go, you shoot an event or capture something, you provide a recap. This is before Instagram was a big deal, so I'm probably showing you how, how old I am. But content, we, we didn't understand that we were creating content is what I was saying. We were just shooting anything that we could shoot. We didn't know that there was long form, short form. Now you got 60 second. There's all these mediums to put it on. We were just capturing and pushing it out. And what that did was it created experiences for us to to teach us how to actually do this the right way with some structured strategy, et cetera, et cetera. So the second question was, I'm sorry, to answer that, not to go into what you asked was, how are we staying ahead of the curve? Yeah, like, no, well, how are you, um, how are you staying constant, like, with all the, which, you know, with internet being so content, based, mm -hmm. like, everybody's doing everything for content now. Like, right. Not just doing it just to do it. Right. Uh, I want to make sure, so ask me that one more time so I can make sure I'm answering your question properly. You're fine. So how are you staying constant with the internet being a mostly content-based, you know? So are, 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 you, are you asking how are we maintaining eyeballs and viewership? Yes. Understood. So okay. Understood. So our mentality when we created the 85 South Show, we understood the importance of having a platform, right? So prior to 85 South Show, I used to work for Steve Harvey. And this is Steve Harvey at Family Feud, um, the talk show. He was everywhere. Nine, you nine had, shows. Yeah, he had like nine shows at the time. Me and Joe's um, role within that capacity was to manage his digital media, creative, um, social, anything in the internet content space. But what we understood from what Steve was, you don't have to chase eyeballs if you're actually creating a space for people to come to. And that's what he had with radio. So he created an audience that touched some seven million people a week. And when you're touching seven million people a week, all you have to do is feed them good content. So I don't know if I answered that properly, but our mentality was to reverse engineer it. We don't have to go chase eyeballs. We'll create a platform for the eyeballs to come to us. If I could add to that too, I would say consistency, right. I think, is a big thing. Like in the beginning, it's, it's for me, it's crazy to see everything that 85 South has become outside of just a podcast. Like we still say and reference the podcast a lot, but we haven't even been in the studio for a while because it's morphed into so many different things. But I think consistency is key. Like, you know, every Friday you're going to get a show, right. right? You know that you can come to 85 South Instagram and see multiple posts a day, engaging posts. And so I think that is a big thing too when it comes to staying relevant, yeah. putting out. Uh, and, and, and then it's, it's understanding the platform and the mediums that you're pushing content toward. So we, we treat YouTube almost like a cartoon network or any other cable television. You know that on Friday, you're gonna get an episode no different than on Monday, you're gonna watch football. So we created TuneIn to some degree. And then there's a level of consistency and pushing out content on our um, Instagram channel. So I know that was a long version, but I hope I answered. I hope I answered no, that question. Puts everything in perspective. Yeah. For that's yeah, for sure, for sure. Who's next? What's up? So my name's Brandon. What's up, Brandon? Uh, I'm the I'm the previous editor of the school newspaper. Okay. I just want to know what some of y'all's challenges are. Um, I know that's super broad, and I'm sure you guys have a lot. Yeah. Um, hey, traveling yeah. is one. Hey, yeah. um, creating content is another. Hey, yeah. But uh, just just some of the challenges you guys have, and how you guys. Are Listen, I'm gonna be any challenge that you have, we have it. It just costs way more for us. That's it. We have overhead. I got payroll. I got legal. I got lawyers. People that want to be hired. We deal with different venues that we walk into. There's different environments. The Midwest is different than the East Coast. Uh, so if you have specific questions, I think I can answer that a little bit better for you. But I, I wake up with headaches. So 
that's a really broad what's question. The most, what's the most enjoyable part of your job? Uh, freedom. Freedom. And there's nothing wrong. Um, this is not to say that n nobody should desire to go, you know, get a job or any of those sort of things. I think freedom comes with enjoying what you do. So I've had jobs that I enjoyed as well, but the freedom to create, control, own the things that we do. Um, if we decide we want to take a left turn, we take a left turn. And there's not too many people that can tell us any different because we've created, um, we've, we've vertically integrated the company. We don't outsource anything. Everything is done internally. So that's what I appreciate. I noticed that you guys have like, uh, like commercials too. Like right. In the, yeah. How did, that, how did that come about? Um, that comes from me and Ryan's experience and Joe's experience working with uh, Steve again. So there's what they call ad buys or radio buys, right? And since we're doing at the time, podcasting was considered non-traditional yeah. mediums. Yeah. So you still you're still trying to write the rules on how you do advertising. But advertising is simple. If you have eyeballs, people want to get in front of eyeballs. And that's it. So people saw that we created a platform. We have X amount of followers. The content is obviously engaging because um, uh, uh, the viewership is consistent every single week. So, you know, the exchange is, the, there's a dollar exchange for eyeballs, being in front of eyeballs. And, and then what we do when we talk to advertisers is we say, hey, we're cool to do whatever you want to do, but um, you have to play within our framework if you want to get in front of our eyeballs. So we're not just going to read some old script that you're asking us to read. We know how to talk to our people better than you do. So I hope that answers that question. Yes, ma'am. What's your name? Raven Williams. Raven Williams? Okay. And what do you do? I'm a graduate student here. Okay. What do you study? Or what's your major? Communication. Cool. Got it. Yeah. So what do you think about like the role of the media for like the young generation? Because being a fan of the show, like how, would, how does those dynamics work? Being also like friends with them, but also making yeah. sure production is always being taken care of. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna let Ryan answer that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think maybe I have a little bit of a unique, unique perspective because I, I was there in the beginning of 85 South and then I moved to LA and then they kind of brought me back on within the last few months. So I'm kind of like coming at it as a, a little bit of an outsider. Um, I mean, the, the friendship, and I think that is honestly what drives, what, what makes the show so good, you know, but the three of them, um, they are, they genuinely love and respect and support each other. And then that, because they're the, we, we all work in a talent driven business. And so you kind of take your cues from the talent and that trickles down to, you know, the squad that we have that goes on the road and, and that travels. And I mean, I think. Chad has done a really good job of assembling people who, yes, we can, you know, be friends. We can, uh, we do spend a lot of time together on the road. We've been to cities all over the country, but we still are capable of doing good business. Like I've been friends with Chad for a long time now. Um, I interned at a company and it was his, his, like one of his first jobs and I interned there. So we've been friends for a long time now. And so I think, you know, everybody kind of takes their cues from the three guys in terms of all right let's let's have a good time right we all like chad said about freedom none of us has to wake up at a certain time there's no dress code we don't have to report anywhere um but it, so we can still have fun but we're also you know about the, the business and um you guys both said you guys met each other at internships mm -hmm. and like working at um, working with steve harvey and um yeah what, like, how did you guys get to those points? Because being like undergrad, that's a good like, question. Graduate, like graduate students, so that's a lot of like, you don't just wake up one day and like, no, oh, you don't. Like, <laughs> uh, so I'll explain my experience, which I don't recommend. <laughs> and I say that because the I didn't have the same resources that y'all had. And it's not, a, it's not a sob story, but you want to. None of us wants to do more work than we have to do. I did, I, I OD on the opportunity that was in front of me. So I was going to school in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, I went to Jacksonville University in college. And there's very limited resources for the things that we want to do, the guys, things that you guys are studying for in small time Jacksonville. So 
I knew that I wanted to be in this, the, the, the creative entertainment digital space, but I knew that Jacksonville didn't offer that. So I was on LinkedIn. I don't even know if people still get on LinkedIn. Okay. So I don't even have a name. I don't even know if I, my LinkedIn is active anymore. Okay, well, good to know. Because I, I hate social media. But I had to get on LinkedIn to figure out who were some players in the Atlanta space because I knew that was the closest place to me and I went to high school in Atlanta. So I reached out to like this, the CEOs or what seemed like people of power that could hire you or make some decisions. There was a company called Liquid Soul Media. This was damn near eight years ago. Reached out to one of their bosses on some like, hey man, I'll do whatever it takes. Not really recognizing what I was putting out there because you're so hungry for, hungry for an opportunity. Not even necessarily recognizing my own value, right? So reached out to him, got some access, got on the phone a couple times, and he, I basically had to do like free work for like three, four, five, six months. I do not recommend that because we still have bills to pay. So I had to make like decisions that are not the best decisions. Not that I was selling dope or nothing like that, but I'm like, shit, I'm at this job. Can I? Uh, sorry, I'm at, I'm at this. I'm at this job that's trying to make ends meet. I had to move back in my mama crib and stay in the basement. You know, these are sacrifices that I had to make that I don't necessarily, again, recommend to y'all because y'all have resources and can build a resume in a different sort of way. But these are the things that I did. So I worked there and I basically, like my job the first day there after six months of free work was to like carry boxes and carry coffee and take notes. I did nothing else. I thought I was the smartest person in the world. I couldn't wait to get into this job that's gonna be so cool, but my job was to sit on conference calls and take notes. I did that for like a year. Or carry bags or do whatever. And then the person that I was, I recognized that um, uh, that social media was an emerging thing at the time. We didn't have any social media opportunities. So I learned to pick, I picked up a camera on my own. I picked up, um, uh, social media on my own, started learning how to edit on my own so that I could provide extra value to these people. Mm -hmm. That allowed me to be there at this job, I want to say for like two years, until they downsized. During that downsizing, me and my partner Joe started a content company that I was telling you all about. In between that time, when I had downsized, so I since he got fired, and I was out of work for about eight months. In the meantime, me and Joe was shooting for anybody that would give us $100. $150 to make it work, right? And again, I do not suggest that you do these things. I'm telling you what I had to do. So I did that, but all that time you're learning how to shoot, how to edit, uh, working against deadlines, even learning how to email. A lot of people don't know how to do that properly. But now when you are front facing for your company, you have to do these things. It's, it's, it's contingent on you getting a paycheck. So I had to do these things for eight months. While that was happening, Steve at the time had was launching a new business and that business happened to need content. Joe was working uh, for the radio station or maybe the production, one of the companies that Steve had at the time. He was like, hey, I got a business partner that's really smart, give him a chance. And she really just, this lady gave me a chance and I just did whatever I could to survive and keep showing I could provide more value if it was learning. I remember they asked me if I knew how to build websites, and I was like, hell yeah. And then I went on YouTube that night to learn how to build a website, you know? And I'm sure all of y'all have done those things, but again, we're talking about eight years ago when, again, digital media is, is it's miles apart from where it was eight years ago. So the answer to the question is, I just kind of thug my way through and just did what I had to do to find a way. What I would tell all of y'all, because people ask me this question all the time, what I would do is this. If you can find a job, find some way to put some money in your pocket, legally, get you some money in your pocket first so that you don't have to make brash decisions or have to make desperate decisions because it's okay to not, I, I know this does not sound cool to hear because Instagram says otherwise. From Most of y'all going to graduate at 21, 22 years old. It's okay to be broke from 22 to like 27, 26 because you're trying to figure it out because you're going to be sacrificing what you got to say. And when I say broke, you're paying your bills. You're not doing nothing sexy. You're not going on trips or spending $150 at the bar. I'm not saying broke when you live at home. Don't take me literally. Put some money in your pocket because your money can fund your opportunities, can fund your dreams. If you put some money in your pocket, you save you some money, go buy you that camera that's going to put you in the space you need to be in. Or it can afford you lunch with the, the mentor or the person that can hire you that you're looking to have hire you. 
I've made decisions based on not having really too much opportunity and resources. Um, so that's how I got in. Again, that's not like the perfect traditional way to do it, but you know, and Joe kind of has the same story, just kind of thugging his way through. I don't, even, I don't, I don't like. Um, what do they call it when you? Uh, oh, you gotta take it. See, right, this is Joe on the line. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I don't like the idea that some of these companies they make kids work for free and they use you and abuse you and they go find somebody else that'll do it for free. But that's what I had to do um, to get in. So I don't know if that answers your question. Okay. Aaron. Aaron, what's up, bro? So my name is Aaron Harrison. Um, I am the head of operations for Homecoming um, and also the host on, K on Tish today on KTSU. No doubt. Um, so my question is, what does the day typically look like um, leading up to a show in regards to the production? Good question. Very good question. And Ryan's the perfect person to answer that because <laughs> that's what we hired him to do. Gotcha. Uh, but when I was doing it, uh, a day, so you have what's called pre-production. I'm sure you know that, right? So pre-production is... Pre-production for us may start, in a perfect world, it'll start uh, four weeks out because we have travel included in what we do. Right. So you're doing everything from logistics to booking flights to managing hotel travel and calendars and schedule. And then leading up to the week of the show, um, we're doing production calls with the uh, house, so you're talking about your sound, your audio, your video, you're getting your camera plots, you're getting your stage plots. Um, we have merchandise that we do, so we're figuring out where merchandise needs to be set up. Um, and then we're d dotting all of our I's and crossing all of our T's leading into the show. So if there's any things we're gonna, if there's any segments we're gonna introduce, if we're gonna, um, if we're gonna have any people that would come out from um, out of the audience, we're getting our legal, our NDAs together. And then the actual day of show, uh, the production team comes in the day before so that they can be settled and clear of mind. And then we have what's in, some people call it itinerary, some people call it run show. That's going that's that's hour by hour, telling us where every single person is going to be, what their roles and responsibilities are, and what's happening leading up to the actual show start time. So you're talking about loading, you're talking about uh, uh, sound check, you're talking about your camera plots. Uh, and everything until you know the actual show executes. Um, so I'm sure it's just as busy as yours. It's kind of similar, not as much. It's not as much. Not as much. Oh yeah. Again, I I'm telling you, everything y'all are doing, man. I will say this because I'm hearing like nothing we're doing is magical. What we're doing is taking a very small brick and building on top of that brick. But what y'all are doing is y'all have the bricks already. So like I'm sure if I looked at your run of show, if I looked at your production calendar or production schedule, I'm telling you, every the only difference is ours just cost more. Or we spend more money and we pay more people. That's really it. You know? But you have all the I'm sure you can do a show with us and like not we can hire you as a PA or something like that or a production coordinator and you wouldn't be you wouldn't be losing your mind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yet. Any other questions? Oh, I'm sorry. He he asked. He asked. Oh, I said, um, what does a day typically look like um, leading up to a show, like in regards to production? Ryan has way more calls and emails, and I forgot about all that stuff that he has to do too. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to make sure I didn't miss anything. No, no. Yeah, I, I I mean, I think Chad did a good job. It's really. Um, it's not rocket science. <laughs> I tell people that all the time. Um, we we really you you have the show that you start with, and and it, we just work backwards. We know that we have either one or two shows at night, and then our job is just um, to make sure that the venues have everything that we need from a production standpoint. This is how we're gonna shoot it. This is how the audio we're gonna record. Um, these are the segments that we might do, and then yeah, we just kind of back it out. All right. If we want uh, the band, if, if we want certain band members here, or we want this look for the show, what do we need to to make it happen? I mean, our, our job is really, like I said, to make, it's a talent driven business. So everything that we do is just, how do we have, in, ensure that the show runs smoothly and that they have everything that they need to be successful. That's that's always kind of at the back of my mind. Um, and then same thing like with. Big Doe. What's up everybody? With. Uh, 
We missing a chip. What's up, man? What, what, what was your name one time, bro? Aaron Harris. What's up, Aaron? Yes, sir. You're the production manager, you said, or operation manager? Yes, sir. Let me let me add this too. I don't want you to think what we do is like a walk in the park by any stretch, right? The, the way you should look at production is as if you are a coach, right? And what coaches do prior to, if y'all play ball or any sort of sport, prior to the game, there's already a, an understanding of how they want to attack this game. Offense and defense, right? So they're putting people in position to put the team in the best position to win the game. So a coach is not just now calling plays the day of, he's been calling plays for damn near a week if it's football, right? And that started on that Monday leading up to that show. So just imagine that your game is the actual execution of the show and you calling plays and running through practice and drills and good coaches, they dissect the quarterbacks, That's they got their own small operation they're running. The offensive line is running their own operation. The defense got a whole operation, but when everything comes together, it's one big operation, but it's a bunch of small operations that's driving to the big operation. So that's how we attack production. So there's no mistakes, there's no second guessing. And if something does go wrong, at least you know where your plan is to bring it back to the plan. I would say uh, when it does go wrong too, because I, you know, I've been on a, a lot of sets, you know, done a lot of shows with these guys now, something will go wrong. So I think as the, if you know, you're in charge of production, it's your job to have the best plan of attack in place and to have thought through what are some potential things that could go wrong, because I, I promise you it will. Like production honestly is a lot of time just putting out fires. Um, you know, you have your plan and, and you think through as much as you can, but there's always gonna be something that comes up that, that you didn't think about. So it's about putting the right people in place and you having the, um, you know, you thinking about everything in advance to try to eliminate as much as you can, but there's always gonna be something that goes wrong. And before we take any more questions, uh, Joe, if you don't mind introducing yourself, I'm Kat, the yearbook editor in chief, and I'm also the moderator. Okay, uh, my name is Joe Newman. I'm uh, the co-creator, director, editor, uh, digital marketing person. <laughs> Sell tickets online. Uh, I run the Twitter, half the Instagram, Facebook. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Happy to be here. Tasha, any more questions? Tasha. Oh, um, <clears throat> my name is Tasha Pollard. I am the news editor for the TSU Herald, but I'm also a visual performing arts student. I act. I'm an older student because I'm a military veteran. So this is like my third career. Oldest relative. Yes. Oldest relative. <laughs> Especially in the creative world. Right, right. So um, this is new for me, but you spoke about working in Jacksonville, thus around a lot of military installations. I was homeless for a little while because I stepped out on my dream to start my company in entertainment. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing I ran into was that I didn't have opportunities mm -hmm. and there weren't people that were willing to open their doors to me right. to allow me to get in and be successful. Right. So my question to you guys is how was you how were you manipulating your brand to give military veterans with media experience the opportunities to work with you? Uh, ask that question. How are you formulating your brand, so to speak, right. to give military veterans the opportunities to work with you and gain experience in the industry. Yeah, uh, we gotta get some more money for you. <laughs> <laughs> but to not be silly, we do have plans to expand and grow an operation, but we're still working on the very uh, nucleus of what this is. Because it's still growing and we're still finding our way in what we're doing. Cause when you think about business growth, it's, your business growth trajectory is usually like this sort of. Right. Ours has kind of been like this. Right. You know? And so right. we're still figuring out the pieces of how to settle them. That's a good question. We want to hire young people, veterans, people that 
be second and third chances. We want to do all those things. It's just we have to make it. Jalen Phillips, Jalen Phillips, Jalen Phillips, I just picked up the camera like two, three years ago. Um, but I got two questions. What does an average project timeline look like? I guess like once you record it, like how fast do you get back out? And then um, when you are recording a show, is there like a story you want to tell every time or do y'all just let them like free and, like do what they want? That's a joke. joke. Uh, are you talking about like a, a podcast or a live show? For a live show. Uh, so the live show, um, I do one every week, uh, so uh, I kind of have to create my own uh, workflow. Um, so usually we record a show on uh, a Friday or Saturday or Thursday, and so what I'll do is I'll take uh, two days um, to download the files from the show, and um, Craig actually uh, showed me, put me on to creating proxy files, so when I'm editing, I'm not editing in the high quality file, so it'll take a day, day and a half, two days, depending on how many camera angles I have and how active I am watching the laptop and you know, I'm at home and all, there's all these distractions and stuff, so it takes about two days to just get the files into the into Final Cut. I use Final Cut Pro to edit um, and get them proxy and then I line them all up um, using the, the audio file as like the, the main source to get everything um, um, frame by frame lined up. Um, and then um, it might take two days to create a line cut, just deciding which angles that tell the story the best. So what we do is, you know, my philosophy is, you know, I trust those guys and I, I everything that comes out of their mouth, I support. And you know, if that wasn't the case, I probably wouldn't want to do this. So um, I let them do what they want to do and it's my job to and me and Craig's job to tell the story visually. So if DC's running off to the corner of the stage, dancing or something, you don't want to miss that. So it's our job to figure out ways to make sure that the story of them existing, telling their story, um, happens. So it takes about five to seven days, depending on how motivated I am, how much coffee and uh, other stimuli I have to work with. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So uh, <laughs> I don't think it's friendly in Texas. Yeah, I know, but uh, <laughs> I'm talking about me. I keep the friendliness with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, about a week. Her perspective. Her perspective. Her perspective too. Like what Joe does is actually pretty amazing. Like the, uh, a one-hour show to put out a show every week. You know, if you watch uh, a standard broadcast show that is a a variety show and it's a big production or whatever like with Steve you would have a team of 10 to 15 people working on a one hour episode for like two months so to put out a show a week is actually pretty incredible yeah. thank you family hi guys I am from KTSU 2 the studio and radio I'm also co-host with TSU today and um I'm also marketing, student marketing chair for this homecoming as well. And I just wanted to ask, what were the key components of marketing that really launched 85 Century? That's a good, really good question. I think, uh, I think when it comes to marketing, uh, the most powerful uh, tools that we have is DC Fly and Carlos Miller and the content, you know, the words that come out of their mouth. So once again, like DC was already a superstar and, also, and already had the, the skill set to be viral from Vine, you know? He already had that capability, so when me and Chad got with him, um, he was doing ratchet people with me, we went and met with him and interviewed him, and, uh, and we understood he had a, a great talent, so I, I mean, I don't put any credit on um, algorithms or SEO or any of that type of stuff, because you know, I understand all that type of stuff, how to you know get the, the biggest pop out of you know tags and, um, and um, what's it called? The, you know the bio that you put in your content and how all that adds but DC and Carlos and the other talent is really the ones who um, who make it go so I, I really just trust the talent that's, that's why I think we've separated ourselves from anybody else it's just really believing in it and trying to um, another thing is uh, the internet gives us the capability to put any type of content out there for anybody to see you know it could be you know, on all different spectrums of quality. So what we really wanted to focus on is making sure that our quality is the highest level. And, and so once we got that 
um, that high power talent, and then we put the energy into it to make sure that we present them in this, you know, the most quality form. That's really the best thing I could do. But I, but marketing is such a marketing. There's a lot that goes into to, to marketing to talk about from like the small technical side, and how we sell tickets or how we create views or you know how we um, engage with other brands. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot that goes into that. But I. Just, the main reason I think why we're so successful is because we focus on a quality product and we have exceptional talent. Yeah. I will say this, looking back, it's much easier to look back now, obviously. When we first started, I remember when we was in the studio and just first started doing the YouTube episodes. There was a time that we would just take that hour long episode and cut as many clips as we could because we understood what, you know, the shareability and engagement and what that does for you. From a strategy side, again, this is looking back, we were just doing it, just hustling, because that's what we did for Steve. But looking back, imagine when you see a funny clip online, how many people you share that to? Yeah. That's 60 seconds. Right. Or, or, and then, you know, then that person gonna share it to another four or five people. So you got Los and Fly cutting up and Chico cutting up and Clayton for a whole hour. There's tons of clips in there. As I look back on our page, if you dive really deep, you just see a bunch of those clips. And you just give them time to do what they do because the algorithm does say the more that you engage with it from likes to comments to shares the more they're going to push it to the top because they want eyeballs just as much as we want those eyeballs. so comedy content shareable content cutting that big pie down to small slices and had people asking you know what is this following the page looking for more we had plenty more to give to them so but that's looking back it ain't like we had an idea i don't want to act like we're some einsteins <laughs> I mean, we, we pretty good at what we do. I mean, we did it for Steve, but it's the talent. I mean, speaks for itself. So, we're gonna allow about two to three more questions before wrapping it up. So, I have a question. What's um, up? Who? Oh, nice thing. I'm the hero editor in chief. Okay. Um, <laughs> who inspired y'all to get into this industry to begin with, or who continues to inspire you? Well, I got in this industry through Craigslist. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I got an internship at BET uh, through Craigslist in LA, oh. and, um, and through that internship, I was able to connect with people who worked for Steve Harvey, and, um, and also people who worked for Tyler Perry in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So after, I, after they didn't want to give me a job at BET, I moved back to Atlanta, which was safer. My family was there. Mm -hmm. And I worked with Tyler Perry, and I worked with Steve Harvey. and. Um, for me personally, I had a op there was one summer where I had an option to uh, work for Tyler Perry, continue working for Tyler Perry, or work for Steve Harvey, and I chose Steve Harvey just because you know I like comedy. So right. he was basically, and he's he's more of a comedy person than Tyler Perry. I know Tyler Perry makes movies, and I learned a lot from working there. Right. But Tyler, but Steve Harvey was just a little bit uh, cooler, and I, I I liked his 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 comedy um, style as opposed to Tyler Perry's kind of style. So I think he was a big motivator and. And when you're around Steve, he's a he's a very unique, special like person. It's hard to describe because he's like so cool. He works so hard. He's so funny. He like likes all this amazing music. So for me, he's one of the people that um, inspired me because I I wanted to show um, I wanted to do for our generation what Steve had done, like bridge the gap. So um, he's a, a big inspiration to me. Even be, I mean. He fired us before he went and uh, met Donald Trump. So, you know, just, you know, just to let you know all that, like, you know, we're working, we're making him look fly, you know, and then he fired us, and then he went and started uh, doing Donald Trump. So, we, uh, we were working on, I was working on his legacy, making his legacy pop. And uh, so, he's, he's my inspiration. Um, yeah. Uh, I wish mine was as deep as that. I remember in college, and so, not to, the, Dude, I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, and, that, and so my family my family stretches from New Orleans to Baton Rouge. So all I see is like people that work in factories and principals and police officers, right? And there's nothing wrong with those jobs. Right. I was just not. It's not anything that I had. Nothing wrong with jobs. Yeah. You saved a lot. You saved a lot. It just it didn't it didn't touch me. Right. Right. It didn't pull me. Is what I'm saying. I just knew I wanted something different. I was in college. And I was watching this show that is now done with called Entourage. 
And I remember watching Ari Gold and I was like, oh shit, people get paid to do this? Is this real? <laughs> right. right? Yeah. The closest thing to Entourage to me was Atlanta. So that's how, and you see these black entrepreneurs, these black CEOs, and it's not just in film and entertainment, there's black people running Delta, there's black people running AT&T, there's black people creating businesses, barbershops, all this sort of stuff. And like, not just doing these things, but are like making decisions in politics and policy right. and there's black police chiefs. That is what inspired me. Right. And I'm like, damn, I didn't even know that we could live like this. Because <laughs> no. I ain't never seen it before. You see, yeah. you see black cities, but like, we're just participants in that city. Right. Whereas in Atlanta, they are, like from entertainment to policy to um, in, in, anything in between, black people have a very large stake in how that city moves and maintains. So I saw Entourage, I wanted to find my version of Entourage, and I saw that in Atlanta. That's what kept me inspired. And we're trying to find my way in that space. Yeah. We'll up? take two more questions, just two. Um, I one, um, I'm sure we all know, but can you like um, go into detail about how important personal relationships are um, in this type of business? Yes, uh, I'll start. Uh, personal relationships, let me back up. The way I approach personal relationships is this, is that I try to give more than I can ever ask for. And I feel like if you give people love, respect, Integrity, honesty, all those sort of things that our moms gave us, then you're usually gonna put yourself in a good position to where you ain't gotta be looking over your shoulder or try to finesse some people or try to out strategize people. If you always giving, and that can be from a physical, if you just offering something, if you can be paying for lunch, I don't know what it is, but if you always giving, the more of those seeds that you sow, they usually come back for you. When me and Joe created the first business we had that was a content company, we always over, we probably gave more than anybody could give us at the time that we was at. Because you learn that your only, your currency is not always cash. It can be a lot of things. Some people's currency is respect. Some people, some people's currency is time, respecting their time. You don't know what it is, right? But we made sure that we were always kind of in tune with people because, again, our show is not rocket science. Our company's not rocket science. It's people. Our headaches are, our, our headaches and the things that drive this company is way more about the people than it is about the money, than it is about the legal, than it is about all those other things that can get wrapped up in when you're watching somebody like Gary Vee on the internet trying to inspire you. If you don't invest in people, then you're going to fall off somewhere. So to answer your question, the importance of relationships, I think, comes from it's like, it's, to me, it's the most important thing. People make all this stuff work until robots take over. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so I started working at Steve Harvey um, through the internship. What happened was my internship coordinator, her brother was a production coordinator. I don't know if you guys know what a production coordinator is, but production coordinator is like the person who hires everybody on the set, uh, kind of like below the line, like underneath the executive producer. So he hires the PAs. So I was a PA, a day player, which means like I come in every day, I get to take out the trash and make copies, and I ask, can I come back tomorrow, please? And they'd be like, yeah, you can come back tomorrow. Just, <laughs> like, that's how you know, I was able to get into um, that environment. She talked about opportunity. That's, that's how I was able to squeeze into that opportunity, through Craigslist, and then the, my internship coordinator's brother. So that's relationship, right? That's like, uh, that's real relationship, and then, so Chad moved to Atlanta. I knew Chad from Jacksonville University, a white college, not HBCU. So we got a little reason there. But uh, <laughs> yeah. so I, I met Chad, brought Chad in. There's another you know relationship um, into the Steve Harvey camp. Chad brought Ryan Pham into the uh, Steve Harvey camp. So you know he works with us now. So it was all you know it's all relationship. Craig, Craig, Craig me and me and Chad. The way Chad got on is we used to do these date videos called Locate Your Love on Steve Harvey. So Steve would talk to these people and then they'd go on a date. Like the lady would choose the three guys that go on a date on the weekend. We got Chad in the game helping me shoot the videos. And then when we were shooting one of the videos, Craig was one of the guys who was on the date. Oh. <laughs> 
girl didn't like him. She was like, no, I'm okay. You know? <laughs> I don't remember what happened. But Craig, uh, you know, we stuck around. And, you know, it was the homie. It was just cool. You know, it wasn't nothing. And then, you know, he had those camera skills. And we would, you know, hustle up jobs with the first company uh, uh, Chad talked about. And we stayed in contact. And now he's, you know, the assistant director on the 85 South Show. Relationships. Yeah, so it's all relationships. But that's the practical, you know, story of... Yeah, just being cool with people. There's no being no asshole, you know what I'm saying? Because, right, right, right. you know, over time, people are like, man, you know, I don't even, it's like sometimes even if people have a certain skill set that you need or you want, you don't even want to be around that person, yeah. especially when you're a boss and you can make yeah. a decision, do I want to be around this person or not? So relationships is, is very important. It's just like, you know, try to be cool is all yeah. I can say. In this business, you spend so much time around each other that a lot of times, like the, uh, the conversation around hiring it really just revolves around do I like that person? Because there's a million qualified applicants. Because let me say this: our guitar player is Craig's brother. So that's another relationship. <laughs> it's all like that. It's pretty much all like that. You, you can find qualified people to do any job at your company. It's really about like how how well are we gonna get along. Yeah. And outside of work and, 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 and you don't always have to have a friendship outside of work I think we do spend a lot of time yeah. outside of work but yes yeah, <laughs> do I want to do I want to spend time with this person for 20 hours a day sometimes when you're on a set yeah yeah speaking of relationships Carlos Miller when I was 17 years old me and Carlos worked in the middle of the mall no comedian this is Carlos Miller moving to Marietta Georgia just to get out of Mississippi Right. We worked in the middle of the mall selling cell phones. He had no idea that I had the talent that I had, and I had no idea. He was funny. He was the funniest person within our five-person radius. <laughs> that's, that's what we, we was in this little... I don't even know if they do kiosks anymore in the mall. Yeah, okay. So, so I don't know how long. So, so this is not, not even... It's not just Lowe's playing English. Worked in the same kiosk with me in Los selling cell phones, plans to people. I go to college. I need. I, I was coming home for the summer. Low stayed. He was five years older than me. He was like my big brother, big cousin. What do you want to call him? He always stayed in touch. He called me more than I called him because I was off trying to play ball, chasing women. You know what we do when we 19. <laughs> Los is making sure I'm straight, not doing nothing stupid. I'm like, bro, I'm coming home for a month. I need a job. He helped me find a job at some sporting goods store. Dicks. Dick Sporting Goods at Dick Sporting Goods store. So we stayed in touch. So I remember a couple years later, he called me like, man, I think I'm gonna do comedy. Man, you always been funny. Of course, you, I'm thinking he gonna do stand up. I look on TV, he's on some show on BET. Not not while I'm not yet, just like some BET. Last show. comic, last comic. Last comic standing, comic, well, all these, right? He's just been thugging his way, hustling his way through. I get back, I have uh, the job with the Marketing agency I was telling you about. Fast forward to that Liquid Soul. I'm not Liquid Soul. That's Steve Harvey. The joke was the way '85 started was the joke was that the office environment was so funny that we should have a show. Cause I'd be arguing with Joe, Joe be arguing with him, and all the other five staff members we had. Just silly stuff when you ain't got nothing else to do. So I'm like, they was like, man, I need a radio show. I'm like, bro, we not that funny. I know somebody that's funny. <laughs> Carlos Miller it was uh, the the. 90s to the hip hop like that also played we right like so we, we wanted to start a radio show that Los was going to host as like a Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon radio show we went and pitched that radio show to every single uh, media outlet that we could or somebody that would pick up our show within the Atlanta dish, uh, city radius nobody would pick it up so then we was like, well, man, let's do internet radio. We didn't really know what that was. And then Los came in with them and was like, well, shit, let's do a podcast. And we was like, what's a podcast? So that's how that started through relationships. And then so Joe was like, well, shit, let's shoot it. We went and found Craig, added the music. And that's how the show created. It's not like we sat around plotting on some genius stuff. We took our relationships and continued to build on top of that brick and built the business around it. But we knew that it was talent because it was real relationships. I've known Joe since I was 18. I've known Lowe since I was 18. Ryan since I was 21. All these people I've known for five, six, seven plus years. These are, these are my real friends that I just happen to make money with, you know? Which goes to show, like with y'all, if y'all are, you know, a lot of people come to us and ask for opportunities. The opportunity may not be here yet for you. What I would do is go build with your people. 
why the money does not does not matter. If there's a model in here, you should be shooting with somebody. If there's a uh, if there's a voiceover recording artist, you should be with an engineer that's in here. If you are uh, if you are a photographer, I'm not I'm sorry. If you're a producer, you should be with a director. If you're a writer, you should be with an actor. All of y'all have way more resources than me and Joe had. I promise you. Joe actually understood production. He had to teach me production and like be patient with me. We just knew we wanted to hustle and figure it out. Y'all got some 15 to 20 odd people that are obviously passionate, very talented, and know what the hell y'all want to do. I didn't know what I wanted to do at 22. Thank God for his patience. But that's off relationship. So like y'all have all the resources to build and create. When I said earlier, it's okay to be broke from like 22 to 25. What I'm telling you is, you can go chase all that stuff that's gonna be here for a very long time where you can focus with your people. Build. For five years and watch what happens. 85 South, 85 South Media is legally, I think four or five years old. And we went from absolutely nothing. Like we started this with a couple dollars. And we're doing sold out shows every single city we go. There's not a city we've been to that has not sold out. We're doing a mil we're tuning if you look at tune in, we're doing a million views a week. Some cable television shows ain't doing it. There's people that are pitching shows and putting big production budgets into the stuff that we do that they can't match. And they can't figure out how. But we stayed down. I can tell you the Saturdays that me and Joe was up trying to figure this out. I can tell you the times we we went to a hole in the wall comedy club with Lowe's and we just shooting. We didn't know what we were shooting. There were times we get on the road with Lowe's to go pick up a check and the check wasn't even there. But we rode all the way to Alabama, whatever city do that, because these are your people that you're down with, where the money don't even matter right now. You know? So relationships are very important. All right, one last question. The final question. Uh, my name What's up, member of the TSU Herald. Uh, nice shirt, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yes, sir. So, uh, you, said, you said photographer? Yes, sir. Okay. Talking for the TSU Sports, no member doubt. of the TSU Herald. No doubt. Uh, Chad, you spoke on using LinkedIn early on in right. your profession. And Joe, you spoke on using Craigslist. <laughs> Can you talk about how did you, what was your social media presence early on? Because it's hard to find your, because you know your identity, yeah. but it's kind of hard to find your identity early on. We have such a small right. base to start from. So talk about your presence. That's a really, really, really good question. I'm gonna tell you how I did it. Every single social media platform I'm on, Joe had to teach me how to do it. That's how much I hate social media. <laughs> I'm dead serious. From Twitter to, except for maybe Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I don't even Instagram. You were on Instagram. I didn't put you on Instagram. He's like, man, you gotta get on Instagram. I'm like, fuck it. For real? Instagram. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, so Joe's educated me on social media. So that's number one. Number two is I know. I think I understand what you're asking. How do I build uh, a brand on digital media where people can take me serious and want to do business with me, right? This is my approach. None of that, none of that stuff matters. Create work. Because your work is a resume. I could say, I can go out there and go take a bunch of pictures in front of a car, and I can take a bunch of pictures on set and be like, yeah, we out here working. But when it's time to ask you what your work is, I ain't got shit to say. Or, I can say, hey bro, you ever heard of the 85 South show? And it's a million questions from there. Or, you ever heard of Steve Harvey? And the work speaks for itself. Now, the question then becomes, what is the, what is the purpose of you wanting to position yourself in that way? What are, you, what are you trying to do with this position? Are you trying to find yourself a job? Then that goes back to the work. Or are you just looking for a bunch of followers? Which is cool. What do you want a bunch of followers for? Do you have that answer? Oh, you're asking me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, being a sports photographer, that, my goal is to be on the NBA floor. Like, that's right. been my dream since a kid. Yep. But once you get that, once I get that position, gain, that will help me gain followers to open up the doors for more things, like doing personal shoots, doing personal shoots for athletes, yep. which is something that I follow. Uh, a major influence for me is uh, Andrew Bernstein. He does... He does a lot of work for the Los Angeles Lakers. Right. right. So he does a lot of personal shoots for them. I'm sorry. Right. Like that's an inspiration. So you so that's so gaining followers in that way. I understand. Yours my work, not necessarily for who I am or antics cool. or things like that. Good. So that's a good answer. So you remember when I said earlier you got all these people around you? You should be shooting all the ball players right now. Sure. 
right? Thanks. And not, it, and it needs to look, it needs okay. to, okay, you are. And it, and it needs to be, okay. Okay. No, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. And it needs to look like whatever the work that you want to be hired for, on top of it, exactly, right? So it's one thing to go shoot it, but if it don't match the Nike campaign or what the Lakers are doing, you ain't there yet. And that's okay, you keep working till you get there. And then your work, I promise you, your work is gonna speak for yourself. There, no, I had to introduce 85 South Show to every single person in the world at one point. Nobody knew what that was. But eventually, the, the pendulum, if you're doing good work consistently, the pendulum eventually swings. How old are you? 20 years old. Bro, you got a long time. There's 50 year old, 60 year old photographers that have been doing this for a very long time. Joe's been doing what he's doing for 10 plus years. I've been doing what I've been doing for 10 plus years. Ryan been doing it for a very long time. Los has been doing comedy for 12 years. He's just now getting the love we think he deserves. Right. Yeah. And we've been knowing how funny he is for God knows how long. So consistency, because a lot of people want to do what you want to do, but a lot of people ain't gonna be doing it at 25. Even less gonna be doing it at 30. <coughs> Which goes back to, don't worry about no money, don't worry about all the extra stuff. Link with your people and just do the work and stay consistent. Thank you. All right, no all right gentlemen, thank you for taking the time out to talk to everybody and answer our questions. So with that being said, we're just gonna go Let's ahead give and a head clap. Thank you. Great. Bye, guys. Um, we would definitely like to get a picture um, with all of us if y'all would like. Can I see what right now? Um, so the last thing we did was at HP. You know how to shoot events though? Yes. You want to shoot it tomorrow? Yes, I do. Matter of fact, I'm going to take you a I can give you a